<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Last week, uh, you guys had, um, you know, decided what to do with the prisoners, brought them back here to town, the town of Saltmarsh, um, got a reward for clearing out that smuggler's den, but then were asked to help out with capturing or destroying that pirate ship. Uh, you guys, uh, so two of you guys staked out the blacksmith to help out the blacksmith with a problem, uh, and managed to capture and then torture a, uh, a dwarf, um, and received information. Didn't torture him. Decorated yes, him. Yes, you did. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we destroyed his psyche. Yes. He, he is very much psychologically ah. damaged now. Um. And then... He got a free tattoo. He ought to be grateful. <laughs> <laughs> and a couple of brandings too but we're just going to ignore that one at which point uh, when Topaz got back to the inn that morning decided to uh, have a good time with, with, with our, our, our half work that's all you need to know and believe we play music to, uh, t- for that encounter <laughs> which I totally support <laughs> yes yes we worked our way through page 88 of the book of erotic poetry with uh, illustration. The fully illustrated book of erotic poetry. Oh, God. <laughs> well, it actually worked out well because 88 was all about woman on woman, so... Mm-hmm. Nice. Do you, like, actually have the book next to you and you're just... <laughs> no, no, I, I was just looking at the... I was looking at the numbers going, huh, that makes me think of breasts. <laughs> so... Is a book an uh, actual item insert? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> All right. So you guys have had about two days till you think that the sea ghost will be in port. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the blacksmith has promised uh, shortly before that time to um, have finished off. Uh, Two special items for members of your party: a uh, an upgrade to a sword and a silvered weapon. Uh, yep. Mhm. Because you you they gave she gave you a discount plus um you know moved you up to the top of the list of, of her uh, assignments for helping solve that problem with the theft. Mhm. So, is there... Oh. oh, something you need to say? Uh, it's just... So the Seekos supposedly are going to be coming in the next two days, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess... We're just... Are we going to go hang out in the cave for two days in case they come early? Or are we just going to hang out in town before the two days? <laughs> From what you were told, information-wise, uh, is that the... Thing, the the smugglers are not expected any sooner than two days from now. They might not even be here in two days. It might be longer than that. But the okay. soonest that they're expected is two days from now. So is there anything specific uh, you guys would like to do, uh, work on, or whatnot before that time period? Lobu's definitely going to fish every day and just like kind of hang out by the water, mostly, right. I think. No, Nox has got nothing to do, so. We can go through another couple pages of the book. No. <laughs> <laughs> Who said no? Noxie. Noxie speaks for... Noxie speaks for the very first time to say no. <laughs> uh, I, just, I just picture Noxie holding up a sign perpetually towards, towards Topaz saying no on it. Yeah. Period. No, period. <laughs> no, no, not even in, in index card anymore. She has a freaking sign that says no topaz on it. <laughs> <laughs> I got it a a sign. Which wouldn't have been so bad, except it was pre-made. It was just for general, all the time use against topaz. That makes sense, though. <laughs> Noxie just keeps it on hand, always. Always. Yep, it's one of the permanent signs. <laughs> 
I had a very strong image in my mind of Noxy dropping sign after sign, all of them saying no in slightly <laughs> larger letters. You should just write no on your hand. And then you just Ooh, she, can get a tattoo your hand. A, she can get a tattoo of a no on her hand. Don't I can worry. do that. I can give you one. Noxy's we shaking should all her get head. Tattoos. She's backing up away from Topaz. <laughs> Hey, could I get a tattoo, actually? I kind of want, like, a, an anchor on my arm. Hey, Lobo, do you want to get matching ones? Heck the frick, yeah. Topaz, would you be able to do that for us? I can definitely do that. That's easy. You want some seaweed twined around it, some chains. Make it interesting. Can I get a little shooting star? Gustus is going to look at you guys all weird and then leave, because tattoos don't really work on scales, so... Could get one on your tongue. And he's out. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you're actually going through with the tattoos, uh, use your tool proficiency plus either intelligence or dexterity. Your choice. Mm, definitely dexterity. Me first, me first. All right. So it looks sort of okay, mostly like what you wanted, Lobu. This is exactly what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Lobu is basically a gutter punk, so a moderate tattoo is like the best thing. Hey, Topaz, you want to do me next? I'm I'm trying to work. Uh you know, personalize them. So, if you wanted the letter of your name worked into it, or some particular aspect of the anchor, then we can try that. Alright. Can Lobu help on this? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I can give guidance. I don't know why I didn't think about that earlier. I can give you guidance. Guidance will work. My apologies for not thinking. What's that do? Uh, you get a D4. Okay. Uh, all right. Next third. Wow. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh the God. perfect tattoo. The perfect. It looks like a real anchor. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't get in the water anymore. You might sink. <laughs> Topaz, this is Just, awesome. I feel like I owe you something for this. Oh, you do. Oh. <laughs> Lobu pulls out his, his uh, accordion and starts playing. <laughs> the song. Lobu, as you look over at <coughs> Volin's tattoo, you realize that it's not... Well, like both <laughs> anchors, your tattoo and hers, they're not matching. Hers looks so much nicer than yours. I mean, yours looked nice when you got it, but looking at hers now... Why? I, That's so I might have had uh, extra incentive on, on Volan, just saying. Upon hearing the music, Noxie's going to throw the sign that says <laughs> no at Topaz. <laughs> oh, I need to... I need to... Uh, I'm, I'm going to take some of my tattoo ink. I'm not tattooing myself, but I'm taking some of my ink and on my own hand... On my one palm, I write, yes. And I hold that up to Noxy. Noxy gives now up now. and goes back upstairs. Now, now, don't tease her. She's just a little goblin. Who else wanted one? I'd like one. Uh, a four-pointed star, if that's okay. Just a small one. Does it represent something? Uh, e yeah. Yeah, it does. Are you going to tell me what? <laughs> it's just my wife. It was oh, um, okay. staring at the night sky. It was one of our favorite pastimes. Very well. Let me see if I can do this. Right, I'm going to give you good guidance. And then a D4. Yeah. 20. Your tattoo skills are just. Coming <laughs> I mean, Lobu, poor Lobu over there. 
He looks like there's a crude child's drawing uh, uh, on him now compared to the other tattoos you've been doing. Well, I mean, 12 is okay. Not bad. Yeah, better, versus the better than average. The, the realism of Volan's tattoo, though. Oh, granted, I'll give you that if you put the two side by side. Yes. <laughs> Lobu, I think you look really good. I mean, yours is pretty great, too, but I like mine better. Besides which, I'm thinking I can add around yours, Lobu. <clears throat> kind of like it just like this. I don't know. It's it's uh, raw. I like my tattoos like I like my fish. Raw. <laughs> thought you were going to say you like your tattoos like you like your women. Raw. <laughs> oh god. I'm gonna we go open Top yeah, Topaz just opened a box and then that box is not closing anything. So. <laughs> so I think we find plenty to do to occupy our two days. Safe to say. I can't think of anything specific I want to do around town. I guess I just walk around to sort of see the sights. Show Callie the the docks and everything. Yeah, and when you do that a lot, Dovin, you notice uh, Lubu down by the water, either fishing or just. <sighs> I'm gonna go have. I'm gonna let Callie swim over to him and cheer him on as he catches these. Hopefully, he doesn't think Callie's something to be caught. <laughs> I think Lobu recognizes Cali enough. Yeah, he, he can tell the bad. difference between between crap. Yeah. Same way that most people can tell the difference between dogs. Nice. God, I hope so. <laughs> it would suck you come back with a steam bucket. Look what I got! Cali's in the middle of it. No. Oh, if she's in the middle of it, she'd still be alive, wouldn't she? Because, she, you know... Yeah, she's king of the world, or queen of the world. Well, I mean, it's that if she's a, a standard fam familiar, she would vanish as soon as she died. Yeah, yeah, you can't. Mm. So she wouldn't be True. In the she wouldn't still be in the bucket if she was dead. Therefore, you wouldn't see her in the bucket if she if she wasn't okay. Very true. Oh, actually, I should... See if I can look around and find the material components for find familiar. Ten gold pieces worth of charcoal and uh, and herbs. Yeah, I imagine well, you, get, you, can, you can you can find that. Um, you get tr trinkets. That's cool. At various. Uh... And a oh, and I need a brass brazier. Oh, oh, what? I'm sorry. Can can you repeat that? I couldn't hear you. Did you say you need a brass brazier? Yes. That's what Bra I heard. Brazier, I think. You mean brazier? brazier? Oh, okay, brazier. If you need a brass brazier, you just ask for a brass bra. Oh. Well. I Which, we can get you that, too. I mean, <laughs> well, uh, not, you, not do you, you, do, you do you. Yeah. I don't think I have a need for... Well, I <laughs> that you'll be able to find the, uh, which, the, the components for Find Familiar um, at the various uh, stalls. Um, in fact, as you like, you know, going around and buying them, you also notice that uh, Kapesk uh, is in the middle of browsing. Well, hello, friend. How are you? What are you doing out here? Avoiding getting my tongue tattooed. <laughs> we were just, it was just a jest, my friend. You looking for anything? At the moment, until past, I wouldn't put a pastor. At the moment, you see that. Uh, that, that Kapeska stopped in front of a booth selling um, what looks like fried and spiced octopus. Ah. Uh, I approve of your appetite. Have you had one <laughs> before? Have I? Yeah. Sure. I've had them a couple times. And I'm already... How, I'm going to look at the vendors. How much can a gold get? Well, uh, the, the vendor... Um... Is, is a young woman. Uh, she um, kind of looks at right at her supply. You know, I could probably part with the rest of these if, if you're willing to give me a gold. <laughs> like, I don't know if I could eat all of those. Two, I already two, does. Lar you know, 
there are two large sized octopi basically there. And mostly she's selling like, you know, the, the tentacles for a few copper. Yeah, yeah, it's already down. The gold's already down, and I'm already like right. so she, shoveling she, it. She lifts up the, the two octopi on, on one of those, um, like, you know, uh, the kind of sticks that they use to get like the, the hanging uh, ducks in, in like a Chinatown and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Do you guys know what I mean? Um, and she kind of like uses that to uh, to pull them down from their from their slots and, and hand them both over to you. Sweet. I'm just gonna eat one whole immediately. Oh yeah, that's, that, that's actually gonna take you probably several minutes, even with your voracious appetite, because it's uh. Oh wow. What a single one is big enough to you know latch onto your chest if it was still alive. All right. Well, I'm gonna start eating one. I'm just gonna like offer the other one to Dovin. I'll just take a piece if you don't mind. Like, so, Dovin, roll a Constitution saving throw for me. Constitution? <laughs> oh, jeez. Nice. It's delicious. Woo you, you've never tasted something so good before. It's like, oh my god, you weren't expecting it to be good because it's you know tentacles and weird spices. But wow, this this this, this cuisine up here is actually quite delicious. I love finding food from other places. You just never know what you're going to find. Do you, now, do you mind you if could, I have... Now you could totally turn into one. That's true. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have swimming speed yet. But someday... And who knows, maybe this is my big bad evil guy final form. You never know. <laughs> just a giant octopus? <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty bad. Giant octopus, they're pretty badass, actually. Yeah, I mean, you can get, like, 40 attacks. Well, yeah, but you can grapple things and restrain them while they're underwater. And they have a land speed. Not very fast, but... They have a land speed of five. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's it's crawl enough to crawl it, across yeah. the deck of the ship and grab somebody and then pull them into the water. <laughs> Slowly crawl towards you. <laughs> if you want the rest, I can give it to you. No, I, I'm not that hungry. I appreciate what you've given me. Thank so you. I'm just going to continue walking in the market with the two entire octopuses on sticks. <laughs> I'll, I'll walk with them. Yeah, one of them is already half done and uh, from you know, Kapesk's uh, voracious appetite and, and also you know, giving part of it off to Dovin to eat. And, and as you walk through, um, you don't notice too much else interesting. Um, the, the various vendors yeah. you've already been to, Dovin sees you know one place probably selling the little bits of components that he can probably uh, find. Uh, that, sorry, that he's probably been looking for. Uh, and mostly, it just looks like a normal day. Not the interesting some of the interesting stuff that the festival had ha had had going on. Uh, that stuff's right. like packed up and gone by this point. Um, you know, put back the various things. But, th but these, um, you know, market stalls each have, uh, you know, different interesting things. Mm -hmm. Has anybody heard about, um, what's his face? The the councilman we kind of screwed? Uh, and or was that Anders? It sounds right. I'm trying to find my notes. Anders Solmore? Yeah. Well, so far, uh, you haven't heard any news uh, regarding him. Okay. Just curious. I don't think the public would hear much about it. Unless it got, like, serious, like he got fired. But other, that, other than that, he'd want to keep it on the down low. Mm -hmm. Right, but Dallin, Dallin, right, with the ski ball, we yeah. took the news. To yeah, Galen. He's holding it on for a rainy day or something. Anyways, this... Octopus is delicious. Yeah. What you did see, they do with starting to... Sorry, go ahead. I, I wondered what they did with Sam Belay and Ned and Adseal. I heard they said they were gonna interrogate them and put them in jail. Okay. Uh that one lady mentioned something about maybe putting on a show for <laughs> you Topaz, hanging them on the gallows. Oh, oh yes. yeah. That's right. Yeah. I'm waiting for word of that. I'll be there. 
Kapeska is heading, you and see that Kapeska is heading towards the rich people section of the town. At some point, um, Lobu would like to do a little bit of shopping, too. Um, should I role-play that out or just throw it in the chat? Uh, for this session, uh, throw it in the chat would probably be best. Cool. Yeah, like, uh, uh, if, if, if Dobin and um, Kapesk are still hanging out, uh, Kapesk, um, yeah, you, you basically see the main thing is the mansion you guys infiltrated before. There's also a couple of other, um, you know, large houses around there. Uh, mm -hmm. They also, now that you've, uh, you're actually getting a chance to look at them, uh, you notice that the several of the houses nearby uh, actually seem to match architecturally with the uh, the main walled one, and it seems like these are actually all part of the same general complex of places. That um, while the the butler might have quarters uh, in the you know the main house that has its own wall and everything like that, so, some of the other um, buildings nearby also look like they might house servants and guards of sorts, which uh, turned out to be not as efficient as one might expect given you were able to infiltrate the place. Right. But hmm. it was during the festival, so people were not as cautious as they should be. Except for the guards that were patrolling the area, but they got, you know, distracted by the bard. <laughs> which is why you always want a bard on lookout. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy. I'll head back towards the end. Yeah. Is there anything else you guys would like to do? Um, you know, buy, buy various uh, supplies. Oh no. Spend that gold you have. <laughs> um. No, I've got nothing. Yeah, I think I'm good too. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. Sometime by the evening of the next day, uh, it is time to pick up your uh, your weapon orders. The plus the plus one um, longsword. And the silvered spear. spear. There we go. Yes. Uh, I hand her back the sword that she gave me for the time being, okay. and not a scratch. Didn't have to use it, but thank uh, you. We owed her gold still, didn't we? Was it, um... You seem to owe her at least another 25 gold, according to these notes. Of course, I might have also forgotten to write something down, but at this point, she basically is looking at her scribbles, kind of rubbing her back of her head, because she looks like she's very tired and also still very busy, and just says, uh, 25 gold, please. Uh, let me I thought we already paid before. We used our platinums to pay for it. Uh, yeah, yes, we... that was the, the, down pay, the down payment, and then there was the, the other, because it was like half on, half on there and half on there. So. Oh, okay. Well... Cool. I I'll pay fifteen if you want to play ten. Uh, is that for both or just one of them? You are each. That's for the, the, both of them. The whole thing. Okay. How much? Um, because I have two platinum. What do we need to pay? We need it's twenty five, but I have two platinum too. So. <clears throat> well, uh, if you can handle the five, I'll give her one of the platinums. But I have no, yeah. I only have one gold. Yeah, yeah I can do that. Right. And I give her. You guys also have access to party funds, I believe. It's fine. I, I we have enough in our personal to get it. I think. All right. Yeah. I just don't know if we do at the moment. Who's who's carrying that around? Uh, Dovin, I think. Okay. That's not right, Dovin. Yeah. <laughs> Spin right. around a few times. Feel the weight. Yeah. Yes. I appreciate it. Thank you. 
Just let us know if you have more problems with those dwarves. Will do. Thank you again. She waves. She's still looking very tired. But your weapons at least look like they are well um, recrafted, you know, fixed up, uh, <clears throat> improved on. She didn't skimp on any of the work. Perfect. Awesome. Sweet. She and her son. All her the son better to... The, son seems to do the majority of it these days, but, you know, she apparently, because they're got you know, some extra hands on deck, is also working on it. All the better for running pirates through. Yeah. I guess we'll head back towards the end, pick everyone up, and go to the cove. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Who are we designating to give the signals? I think it should either be you or me, because we have proficiency in those types of things. Ship-based things. One but Volan has the book, so... Yes, but say Volan does have a book. For two platinum, it's an expensive shield. It's twenty gold pieces. And yes, well, oh. you can. It's a, it, uh, you can say that's part of your uh, shopping day. Thank you, um, guys. I also grabbed the uh, the what's it called? Uh, bullseye lantern that they were using to give the signals, and I have tons of candles and, and you yeah, have a the, thing uh, of flint and steel. Yeah. And, and you have a message li list. Basically. Yeah, we have a message list that I can... Yes. Uh, yeah, you... it's not doing it, it's just who is going to be doing it. Are it you is... getting a special shield, Volan? Because the one of the players is 10. It's 10? Yeah. Okay, then you only need to use one peep. platinum base for that. Platinum base for that. <laughs> Alright, cool. Oh, uh, speaking of armor, Volan, did you want to take the Mariner? I think maybe for now, and that's my in-character way of saying until my constitution goes up by one. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you got uh, scale mail that, I don't know what Mariner's armor Gives you yeah. inherent speed, swim speed. Yeah, it allows you speed, and if you get unconscious underwater, it'll float you back to the surface. Cool. Alright, well, I'm sorry. Does she need to attune to it? Oh, speaking of attunement, we should maybe take a look at the Philosopher's Stone sometime? What? Why would we do that? You told us earlier, last session, that that was a bad idea. Last session? I wasn't here last session. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was the GM speaking through oh, okay, yeah, gotcha. you, you left instructions for the GM to tell them that, so... I did, sort of, yeah. Just to be careful, uh, so can we do it now? Can I see? Uh, can can we do it now? Let's go to the cove first. There's lots of okay. people around. All right. Fine. Yeah, head to the cove. Um, Kapesk will thumb uh, if Bowen allows him to thumb through the message book just to see if he what he can learn during the trip there. Roll an investigation check. My strong suit. That's to my strong suit. <laughs> yeah. I feel like maybe it, we should... Go ahead, sorry. Kapask, as far as you're concerned, it resembles just a bunch of chicken scratches that you can not really make heads or tails out of. There. I hand it back to Bullen after like five minutes of trying. What book is... This um, is the book about the stone? Message. The, oh, the, oh like, okay. Message. okay. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Did anyone else want to take a look at it beforehand, or...? I can take a look at it, but I'm thinking some of us who can be ought to be in the water when they come. Yeah. I think... Ooh, remembering the layout of the cove, so there's like that entrancing cove with all the sand and stuff, and then there's a hallway. I think we should hide in that hallway, because that's kind of a... they can't see into that hallway from where... Uh, the ship is going to be entering. Well, wouldn't it be suspicious if there was no if there was no one on the beach? 
for them? Like, what if they usually have people meet them? On the yeah, I don't think they have usually have CLs, Lizardmen, or Half-Orcs waiting for them there. It will be at night, right under cover of darkness. They will see the lights and be going by that. Okay, if, if you guys want to, I think if that's the case, then I think it should be like Volan and Dovin, because they look the most like the humans and the bugbears that the crew was made up of. Uh, they were you guys hob should... hobgoblins, actually. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, but still. Volan I intend is... to be in the water. Yeah, oh, that's what I'm saying. Waiting. Volan and Dovin can be like covered or whatever, and they'll be the people on the beach. Noxie can be like in the hallway away, uh, just away. And then the seagulls and I can stay in the water, and that way we can trap them so they can't escape. Oxy holds up a sign. Um, we could try disguising someone as a hobgoblin. That would probably be Volan. She's the only one tall enough to be one. What about one of the human scouts? You what, did, what did they wear? Um, you do have um, various uh, clothing, you know... What, what, yeah, the bodies, for example, the people you already killed are still back in that uh, cove, and so you know that you could probably, like, you know, wrangle some of them off the corpses and um, put them on if need be. Cool. Are we still in town, or are we still, or on our way to the? You I assume hidden. we're talking. You're on the way. Walking so. and talking. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the plan is: Noxie's going to hide in the hallway. Volan is going to be a hobgoblin, and Dovin's going to dress up as one of the people, and then the three water people hide in the water, and we'll ambush them when they're off the boat. Sounds good. How many uh, d days of worth of rations did you guys bring with you? I personally have. Hold on. There. Why is it nothing happening? Hold on. I have five. Of course, if you just want to worry about things like Goodberry or the. Uh, or, or, I have ten days of rations. Or getting so. the fish, but. Yeah, so. I have ten days of rations, yeah. so I'm good. So, who's going to be keeping watch for the boat at night? Um. I could potentially. If we think it doesn't matter that I don't have dark vision. Uh, I think I, I could do it. No, I, I don't have dark vision either, never mind. Do you want to team up with Mika best? We can both keep an eye out. Sure. Lobu will definitely volunteer a shift since he just doesn't really have to sleep very much. Yeah, the elves should definitely take big turns taking night shifts considering they have four hours. And dark vision. Yep. So the sea elves are keeping watch, or what? Sounds like it. Yeah. Are we going to have a message spell going? I don't think anybody knows how to do that. No, I can give... Uh, well, Callie can be with one of you. Volin is the one that's been reading the book, so... She is probably the most likely chance to get it right. Uh, I mean, I've been thumbing through it. I don't know if I've learned much. GM, have I learned anything? Uh, roll an investigation check. Could I help her with that? Sure. Look at the book with her, and we can like study together. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna be on the thing with her. So. So you get it at an advantage. Got this ball. All right. Hey. I <clears throat> didn't even need it. Yeah, you think you, just, I... you know, staring at the, the the page that you that even if you didn't have it open with. Oh, open at the time, that you would at least be able to recognize the signals and understand what they mean when you see them. Yeah, I think I could probably signal this. It's not too difficult. Cool. And during our watch, if Callie could be with either me or Lobu, so we can swim a little further out, maybe tell when the ship is coming decent time in advance. Get the message back to you guys on shore. Well, if I give you, um, if Callie's with you, then Callie can just tell me. Right. 
I'm just saying because we can go a little further out and be in the water the whole time. Mm -hmm. And, and maybe also get a feel for how many of them are on the ship when it shows up. Cause I have a feeling they're just going to, to anchor it, send in their longboat with however many are there to pick up meet with the people in the cove and their ship will be sitting out there. We won't know how many are on it. Right. Forewarned is forearmed. If we can have some people eyes on target all the way from the ship to the shore. The thing is, what if they have like a thing, like they get to the ship and then they signal back to the, uh, to the big ship. We made it safely. Is there anything like that in the book of messages? Like, uh, made it safely or something like that? Uh, Sadly, you don't see one that says exactly that, but you do see phrases like, is it safe, everything's safe, ready, come to ship, that sort of thing. Okay. Come to ship? Yes. Oh, so maybe they expect us to come to them? I think it's just, it's a message if they need to, uh, to show that message. Mm -hmm. They're going to be coming here because they're going to need to pick up the... Well, actually, I don't know. Either the they're... Before that, or the last one is... Well, never mind, never mind. What I'm saying is, I'm just thinking, what if they their plan is that they anchor close to it and then they use the boat that we have mm -hmm. right here to uh, bring the thing over to them, so they don't have to come in. That's a very legitimate concern, actually. <laughs> do we get on the... Do we row the boat out to them? And board them that way? If that's the case, we need to stay hidden and cover our faces, but, I mean, we'd be on the boat. We don't know how outnumbered we would be. We should at least be prepared for that, if that's what happens. We could totally pincer maneuver them. If one, if two of us were in the boat and the rest of us were swimming, or, you know, whoever can wear the, the mariner armor and then sneak up the other side and then just shove them off the boat. I like it. Although, can you just climb up on a boat? boat's kind of big. Uh, Lobo's eyes get really big, and he's like, I just bought... A grappling hook. And I can naturally <laughs> climb. <laughs> Alright, Lulu. Well, Good and night. I can climb naturally, so. Nice. Okay, so we got plan A and plan B. Just do a dolphin jump. Get right up on that deck. Nice. So are we at the house yet? Cool. Let's go ahead and, and pick out that philosopher's stone if, if people are ready for it. I'm wondering, I don't, Randy the player doesn't fucking know anything about this thing. So um, should we be giving this to a spellcaster or should we be giving this to whomever? Like, I don't know what this thing does. You don't know what it does at all. You Nobody's attuned to it. Okay. okay. Lobu sees you picking it up, and he's like, Hey, man, um, the last guy who had that was some sort of evil undead skeleton. I'm not turning into a skeleton. I want to do it. Capesc I want to do it. Yes. <laughs> it was like going for the Philosopher's Stone in your hand. Like, I'll do it. <laughs> Easily. We don't know how dangerous this thing is. Well, if we're going to do it, it might as well be someone who's I don't know, not the magician guy, so the magician guy can help the person that's turning into a skeleton if that happens. Well, I can... holds up a line. Maybe we should find someone to identify it? Well... Uh, we already did, didn't we? And that's how we know it's a Philosopher's Stone? Um, I don't think we identified it. Like, it's spell. Spell. 
I think it was just based on the book we found nearby. But let's let Lobu attune to it. And then if something goes horribly wrong, we can help him. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna. I was the one saying I wanted to do it. You want? To, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah Hold on, guys. The one that said he didn't want to turn into a skeleton. So. Uh, okay. Just I'll a moment, the... everybody. Can hmm. I get? Can I get some guidance here, real quick? I, I, I at least want to make a roll about this. All right. Yeah, I can give you guidance. Um, and then Lobu is kind of looking at the stone and looking at the book we found with it and wants to roll Arcana. All right, making a okay. Uh, let's see. Twenty-four, nice. Let's see what it says. It is titled "The Secret of Ye Philosopher's Stone," although no author is acknowledged. It is written in common, but it is too profound and too re that resident of a work to be properly understood by anyone other than the appropriate specialist. But a character might be able to. Subject matter. Getting that knowledge requires eight hours of study. But you you did succeed the the arcana check required. But it requires eight hours. Are you willing to spend eight hours to decipher the book? I absolutely am. But I think Lobu might have a problem with that. <laughs> yeah, I think Lobu would probably give up after the first hour if that. <laughs> yep, that's that's just the way it is. Uh, as soon as Lobu gives up, he's gonna. Uh, as soon as Lobu gives up, Kapaska's taking the stone, and he's going to start attuning to that thing. Okay. We need to work on Lobu's endurance. <laughs> oh, God. Lobu's So a, so a short right. rest goes by, and I shall whisper you what it is. We're all gonna die. Yeah, it <laughs> immediately, oh, as soon as the hour's up, it immediately just explodes. Gonna turn into like an evil necromancer. The smugglers are gonna get here and they're just gonna see splats on the wall. Oh, you know, that would be so epic if Kafes turned into a necromancer. That would be an epic fight. Didn't your intelligence come out well? My intelligence is plus one. I just rolled oh. terrible in all nice. intelligence rolls. <laughs> Dead. Uh oh. What are what are we talking about here? Get your mind out of the gutter. <laughs> now, since my mouse is going very slow. Mm. Blood so gates have been opened. Probably going to need new batteries is what I'm thinking. There we go. And that is okay. now what Kapesk has attuned to him. Fun, what does it do? Well... Let's see if I have a page for you. I think I might actually have a handout for this. Uh oh. <laughs> Alright, I think Capesta's gonna die, guys. Turns the user into a skeleton. What are you are you tuning to the Philosopher's Stone? Yeah, that's what we've been talking about since Oh god. Yeah. No, nope, it doesn't. It, there isn't. Doesn't appear to be a specific uh, thing for it, which is good, I suppose. Let's see. Yeah, but yeah, Volan has it right. It's yeah. It's a cursed luck stone. I'm not sure what a luck stone does. <clears throat> luck stones are cool. Yeah, this one's cursed. <laughs> okay. The curse. Okay. This item is cursed. Attuning to it curses you until you are a target of remove curse, spell, or similar magic. As long as you remain cursed, you cannot discard the stone, which immediately teleports back into your pocket or pack. After you use the stone's magic, your next two ability checks are made with disadvantage. 
But next to what? Attacks or Volcanic ability? Volcanic you gain advantage on one ability check of your choice. It's unconfused, blah, blah, blah. But, um... Basically, you can you, you can use it to make your next uh, your your next attack be at advantage. I'm um, oh, sorry, next ability ch ch check of your choice. But after it's used, after that's used up, your next two ability checks are at disadvantage. Oh, interesting. So basically, it's a, a bit like reckless attack followed by immediate exhaustion from frenzying. Interesting. In a way. That's cool. Yeah, I took, uh, Pest tells nothing to the, uh, nothing about this to everyone else, and he just says, Guys, I think I just became God. <laughs> inside. Yeah, inside. Do it. Do it. Well, actually, Capesk might actually be feeling pretty good about this, because he does feel the, the effects of, uh, of the fact that he can roll an advantage uh, or something. Uh... I'm clicking all the wrong ones. It's a negative three. <laughs> nice. So I got a zero on my persuasion. I clap my hand on your shoulder and it's a... It's... But... Are you okay? I told you, I'm God. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Clearly, right. it's a stone of mega ego. Best to leave him be. <laughs> <laughs> Kapesk always had mega ego. Are you kidding? <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> so that's so I, I think. That, that's your yeah. first evening of waiting for the ship. Uh, whoever's on watch, please roll me a perception check. Was that the CLs or was that Volan and Dovin? Uh, so first, whoever's at early watch, which I believe is Volan and either Volan or Dovin or both. Yeah, it was both. It was either both of Volan or Dovin or both of the CLs. So. Yeah, I can go ahead and roll. Yeah. I'll assist if I can. Oh. Uh. Assist, assisting means you get to roll with advantage. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so Dovin and Volan, you don't see anything that night. How about the two seals? Nice. Wow. Yeah, you guys didn't see much of anything either. So the next day comes, it seems rather uneventful. Uh, is there anything specific you guys wish to do to pass your time, or would you just like to get to the next evening? Oh, uh, we should, in case we have to row out there, maybe we should, because they're picking stuff up, right? Or are, we, or are they dropping stuff off? Do we know? I don't think we do. Okay, in case they want us to come to them, we should maybe, like, have a couple barrels like by the ship so we I don't can... know what they'd be picking up they were smuggling this rum here to sell in the town yes okay so they were droppings they, they are dropping stuff off. so chances okay. are the ship is dropping off okay that, that's what I was asking about but maybe we should no, never mind does anyone want to no, we kind of export the house. Yeah, I'm good. I'll just put. This is trying to make water in the wine. And Guys, he... should we live here? Doesn't have any luck out here. I mean, this house is kind of worn down. Yeah, it's great. It's got monsters in the attic and and ghosts in the basement. We fix it up and be real great. There's also those snakes, though, Lobu. Uh, Lobu, before you look at him again, is in the water in the bay, and he's like, snakes? <laughs> 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 Lobu, did you know that there's substrings called water snakes? <laughs> he's standing on a rock in <laughs> the bay. I'm swimming around him. You know there are rock snakes as well. 
Snakes are everywhere, dude. You just gotta be always on watch. Moxie well, also has like... flying snakes too, and she has drawn one. Lobu just kind of like freaks out and uh, tries to to like stay on uh, shards or Topaz's back for just a minute, and then um, hides behind Volan, moving like lightning. It's all right, oh, man. I could be really mean and turn into a snake. <laughs> nah. Maybe later. All right. So. Dang it. Capesca is thoroughly upset. Yeah. What you trying to do, bud? I was Wait. trying to make water into wine. Oh, can you actually do that? No, because I think he can. Yeah. If you all are going time. to be on the ship, if they come in here and you have to row out there, you need to decide who's going to be the rowing, who's going to do the talking, and who exactly is going to be on that ship, on the boat. Topaz and Capesh should be doing the talking. I I'm not doing any talk. I'm going to be... Disagree. I'm going to be <laughs> in the water. Yeah. I'm going to voice my, my dissent. I'm going to be in the water all the way out. If you've got to take that longboat out to the ship, I'll be following you. Don't worry. I'm probably coming up the other side of it. Oh, yeah. We're doing first the first sign of trouble. Boat thing. Right, right, right. I mean, now, the whole point of this is to take the ship, right? So, right, right, right. I don't I'll know go about the rest pass, of you. I can, I can naturally climb, so you can, I can help you get up. Shouldn't be too hard to pick out the captain. If things throw down, that's who we take out. Well, okay, so I guess we should talk. I mean, what's our mission exactly? To, to capture get rid of the, the pirates. Yeah. Yeah, we need ca at least capture the captain so we have proof that we got rid of the pirates and capture the boat without it getting damaged too much. So we can okay. have it. So I don't imagine there's going to be too much talking. Oh, oh. Getting... I just no. had an idea. We should probably load this boat up with all that stolen crap they've got in the cave. It oh. would, yeah, it would help us get on the boat, yeah. <clears throat> but so I guess, um, to answer Tupac's earlier question, so I guess the people on the boat has to be Volan, me, and Nox. And I think... Oh, well, I was going to say they do have tons of hobgoblins that are working for them, and maybe Noxie could speak to us before realizing that Noxie doesn't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Noxie holds up a sign. I can translate, though. Right. You can. It would be a little weird, because I don't think they had any mute people. But Or you could hide in some of the, the gear that they <clears throat> would transport on board. Moxie likes that idea. She likes to use visibly inside it to hide and sign something. So she can <clears> jump <throat> out and attack people. <laughs> Safari has got one. Yeah. So we'll take Callie, and if anything goes wrong with uh, you guys, uh, the sea elves and I can climb up the boat and help you guys. Yes. We're on the coast. So at some point or another, I'm going to be swimming around in there and see if I can find some carnivorous fish. Preferably quippers. A swarm of quippers would be great. Ooh. Mm, okay. Uh, that means I'll take an animal handling check at advantage. Okay. Alright. You swim around for a couple of hours, and after uh, after a bit, you do encounter various crippers. They seem to be gathering them together here and there, forming Perfect. them into a small little swarm. Yep. I just want to let them know that it may not be long now. There will be plenty of food for them. They just will, when I call for them, come to me, and there will be things to eat. So what if I remember what? My plan is, when that time comes, try to get them out around the ship and any of the guys we knock over. Food for quippers. Alright. So, 
So, you have admitted yourself a temporary ally of a swarm of creepers. However, awesome. they, they, they only res will respond to you, and if anybody else in your party happens to fall over into the water, likely they will get attacked by the swarm of creepers. Oh, yeah. Now. Oh, sure. They're on their own. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I, I can let people in the party know, by the way, don't fall in the water when things happen. Just saying. Might be bad. Got it. I will keep that in mind. <laughs> when has she ever not said that? Oh, yeah. Well, there, that too. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we're waiting for whenever the ship finally comes. So you spend your day getting a, you got yourself a swarm of quippers, you uh, frighten Lobu for a bit, uh, which always seems to put the rest of the group in a good mood. Except for Lobu. Lobu's not very happy, apparently, because he's hiding and running. But, uh... But night comes. Who's taking first watch? Um, I, I will. All right. <clears throat> Roll me a does someone wanna? Up, does someone wanna help? <laughs> well, so you're you're oh. in the water, right? So you guys are separated from us. At yeah, this? but but okay. one, like I said, one of us out there has Callie. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So Callie should be able to contact Owen if things happen, or we see somebody, or wake him up, ping in his head, and. So at any given time, if anybody, whoever's out in the water, and we should have somebody out in the water at the same time as whoever is keeping watch on land. All right, Nox will take first shift on land then. I think we can do that. We got enough people, and the elves only need the four hours each, I think, between the two of us and Kapask. True. I'll take uh, first sea elf watch then. All right. So, first watch, uh, please give me uh, separate perception checks, because you're not close enough to actually help each other. Ooh. Yikes! Lubu sees nothing! He is distracted by the quippers that are swimming around nearby. <laughs> Noxie, though. Alright. Okay, Noxie. As you stare out into the, into the deep night... You kind of make out the form of a ship, slowly making its way towards here. And after a All little right. while, you start seeing flashing lights coming coming from it. Long, oh. short, short, short. It waits a, f a f it waits a minute, then starts flashing again. The same sequence. Um, can I look at the paper to see? What symbol? What sign does that mean? Rule an investigation check. You try to decipher it, and you you just can't make it out. It's it, it's just getting too much. Maybe it's because it's it's so dark out here. Otherwise, that you're having difficulty just like deciphering this. Um, All right. Do know enough though that Volin, it, you know, has this kind of memorized, and she knows it like the back of her hand now. All right, I, I'll ra I have a bell, so I'll just ring that little bell to like um, grab the attention, of everyone. All right. So uh, all of you on land, you're currently hearing a small bell start to chime. Oh no! Oh, bell. Where is it coming from? It's coming from the direction of Noxie. Uh, oh. Noxie, are you okay? Do I see Noxie? No, because it's dark. <laughs> You're human. <laughs> oh, jeez, Louise. Uh, can I can I light a torch? No, don't do that. Well, where are we? Are we in the Ooh. cave? <laughs> You're in the caves, <laughs> You're in the caves our, currently. Our party's limitations come back to haunt us. <laughs> Noxie. Noxie. <laughs> a mute trying to communicate with a human who can't see. Oh my! I I not rolling away. Where's Nox? We didn't think <laughs> about this scenario, did we? No. Uh, I'm gonna walk towards. I'm gonna walk towards Dovin. I'm gonna try to like hand hand him the the paper with all the signs on it. 
Oh, the paper with all the signs in it? Yeah, but you can't really read it. I just forgot. But Well, I mean, it, it's not pitch black, right? I just have disadvantage it's, on, like, attacks and stuff. It, it's too dark for a human to read. Okay. Bolan, what do they say? <laughs> uh, what are you handing me? Uh, it's a note from Noxie. It's not a note. <laughs> it's a... It's a sign with all the... It's the paper we got with yeah, all the... Yeah, Volan, it's the paper you're very familiar with. You know all the signs on it. Oh, shoot. She's telling me, dude. Get ready. Are they Is coming? it time? Uh, What's she time? nods. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm gonna... Volan sees Noxie's holding a bell. Oh, okay. Um, I'll grab the bullseye lantern and head out towards... Uh... Alright, whoever has Tally on their shoulder is about to get a sharp pinch in the ear. Oh, it's definitely so, not Kepas, because he was beating it. Obu. So, Volan. Uh, it, several minutes have gone by, but the, the the craft is still signaling out there, and you see that it's long, short, 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 which is the sign for, is it safe? I will respond back with everything safe. Short, long, short, long. After a moment, the the um, the signal from the other ship changes to ready to unload. Come to the ship. All right. Is there a response to that or no? You have no way to know. But I mean, there's, that's what they're telling us that they need to. They we need to bring the ship of stuff. Right, but I'm asking if there was a response to that comment. That would be. It's fine. Uh. They're calling for us to go. All right. <laughs> Plan B. <clears throat> Does Lobu tell us that it's ready? Lobu appears to be currently distracted by pretty seashells. Where am I? Is this during a sleep period or uh, my own land? You're, you're, you're currently asleep. You're, yeah, we're all in water. All right. Somebody waking me up. I hope. Well, Lobu is the only one that can tell us. So okay. right now, Kapesk and Topaz are unaware. Yeah. After Lobu. that, Lobu, after um, Dovin very intelligently has uh, his crab pinch, pinch Lobu, he immediately starts swimming back fast as he can. Kapesk and Topaz are in the water with you. We just don't know. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, Lobo's gonna be like, I, I think it's, I think it's happening. Uh, little, little crab, why don't you, uh, give me another pinch if it's happening. If, if it's just underwater, remember that only, um, only Topaz can understand you. Uh, Kapaz can just do bloop, 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 bloop. That's right. I forgot He's about just that. nodding like he understands. She'd give him another pinch. Um, Lobo's going to do his best to uh, signal to Kapesk that game on, game on. <laughs> okay, cool. So I guess we got to get this boat in the water and uh, then start. Yeah. yeah, I'll start rowing us out. Calling for my quippers, and I start swimming out toward the big ship. I'll follow Topaz. Yeah, your, quip, your, your quipper friends um, follow, follow you, anticipating a nice meal. I try to communicate to them, not Lobu, not the lizard man. Roll an animal handling check. Oh, God, those we're gonna get those you. do not taste good. No, go ahead and eat the lizard man. He's <laughs> mine. <laughs> And the other elf is fending for himself. Apparently, they don't know oh. the difference. Oh well. Yeah, they they definitely are we getting not, attacked. They, they definitely do not understand what you're trying to signal to them about this. They're just oh. in, in, wait, waiting for whatever food falls their way. Uh, the only thing I can say is Lo distance. Lobu can tell him himself. No, not me. He can do it too. Oh, so, pass your shit out of luck. Okay. Yeah, I'll I'll like swim next to Topaz a ways away, not in range of the quippers, but near Topaz, so we're not separated. Oh god, that was their intelligence check. Okay, <laughs> minus five. That's great. <laughs> All right, they're like the Monty Python guards. You want us to eat him 
and wait for you. No, no. Don't eat him. <laughs> eat guys. Okay, fine. We eat everyone on the ship. Uh, yeah, just... Alright, so we're all swimming over there. Alright. Hold on, I'm just trying to arrange your tokens to see if I can figure out where you guys would be on the ship. Well, the plan is, I think, at least for me, is to try to come up on the other side of it. Definitely. So right. if the the longboat is being rowed out there now, I want to outswim it a little bit. Yeah. And be, be out there already before they get there. Okay. Yeah, that's why I'm just putting your tokens down in the right spot. Because once again, you guys have the nice advantage of the, um, digital, you know, the, the nice lighting effects. So, I want to make sure um, the tokens are in the right spot. Am I going to be inside a barrel? I forgot. <laughs> That's right, Noxie. Put you on. That's right, you guys were, hi were hiding Noxie, weren't you? Yeah. Alright. Oh, that shoot. Bone there. looks like a hobgoblin, right? Is someone disguising her? Or... Well, that's why I asked if I, if we were still in town, because I, I thought maybe we should have picked up a disguise kit. Yeah, unfortunately, but... you didn't think about that until you got there. However, you can be wearing, like, you know, the the clothing that the people there were wearing, if you want. Yeah, it's hide, your face. hide your face. I'm also wearing their armor. Yeah. Oh, true. Like, actually yeah. are. Yeah, one of the hobgoblins was wearing that, so we're good. Right. Just ask this, like, new recruits or something. Okay, so you take the, you take your your rowboat out. The three of you, really, the two of you plus a barrel, <laughs> and and you start rowing out there, and it takes about fifteen to twenty minutes. Uh, roll in, roll a strength check since you're the one rowing. Give her guidance. She gets a D four. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It takes the full. The full yeah. Would a D four help or is it just a natural one? Yeah, it actually takes more like a thirty minutes at this point. Um, yeah. Did I strain you that much, Volan? Just waiting, somehow tapping their foot and waiting underwater. <laughs> Yeah, and that, that is that, of course, Lobu, Kapask, and Topaz all get into um, position. Uh, now, they're getting towards the... Okay, I'm trying to remember what what the decks are called here. Uh, let's see. If the, if the front is one way, uh, they're coming up along the side that's showing. Uh, the one that's on the right of the front. Do you guys happen to know offhand what that is? Sure. Starboard is right, board is left. That. Yeah. Okay, so you guys are coming up to the starboard side. Uh, the other three yeah. of you, which direction do you, were you coming up in? Port, front, or back? Which three? Capacity, Topaz, and Libu. Oh, on the back. far side, the seaward side, whatever that is. Uh, that, that's what I'm asking. I don't actually know what that means. I don't know Mariner terms. <laughs> I don't know which... Seaward. I can't see the ship. I don't know which way it's facing. It would be oh, whatever side is facing not, the open ocean. Yeah, seaward. Duh. Yeah, so that would be port in this case. Sorry. Brain, it was not Ooh. working right. I hate that. Uh, okay, so I'm moving you guys over to, over to that position. Coming up alongside. All right. So... As you get to the ship, um, the Dovin and Volin, you can easily make it up the ramp as your ship anchors. But what are you going to do about that barrel? Uh, Dovin, should we call to them and tell them we have a barrel? Or maybe we should just bring her up? How, though? The, how big are... It, would the barrel be big enough for Volan to carry it? Or would it take two of us? Uh, Volan should be able to handle it. Volan is a strong half-orc, after all. Do you mind? N no, I can try. Cool. Are there, lights, like are there lights on the ship? Uh, 
there are some up on the uh, on the main deck, uh, you know, enough for people to see by. Uh, and as you climb up, uh, you see. Uh, let's see. Let's see what the actual nice description is. Uh, yeah, here we go. Oh no, that's this. That's if you're climbing and sneaking on board. All right. So as you see, as you get up there, you see a you know one of the pirates or smugglers or whatever exactly they are uh, standing up on the deck along with. Uh, let me get the description out of this one. Stupid mouse. Stop it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'll just put out the description of this one guy here. Oh, that's because it's... Oh, no, that's weird. Huh. That is totally weird. Oh, that's mm. why. Because they are actually... Never mind. Yeah. You basically see that... You basically see two people standing up on the deck as you come in. Uh, one of them just looks like a regular hired hand. The other one looks like, you know, a uh, an actual pirate or rugged seaman of some kind. And he just kind of grins at the, gr at the group of you. Well... Oh. You you look, look like your your new recruits. I don't think I recognize either of you. And what's this? You bringing some celebration uh, drinks with you? Uh, I yes, we uh, both she and I started recently. Um, I'm gonna give Lobu another pinch on the ear. And so there's just those two people on the docks. On the deck, sorry. Uh, roll a perception check. Can I also look around? Yes, both of you can roll perception. Ooh, I'm not rolling very well. Yeah. Hey. Well, well Dovin only notices the two in front. Volan looks around, looks up towards the upper deck, and notices that there's actually a bunch of people, a group of people up there. At least four on the deck that goes up this way. Um... You would access through these stairs over here, and another one all the way over, he all the way over that way up up above. And you can hear some movement down below, some people working um, underneath in the the hold. So there's there's obviously there's more open deck. Both ends can can those of us in the water that have dark vision can we see people up on the deck? Uh, roll a perception check. Bad angle, apparently. Yeah, Lou well, can definitely the... make out the two people that are standing up here, but you can't see from your angle any of the one that's up on the upper on the upper decks from where you're at. If there's any way to inconspicuously tell Dovin, just like nudge him or something, and nod my head over to where there's like five people standing. Just kind of like a heads up, hey, there's tons of people here. Meanwhile, uh, Lobu is like, well, we got the signal. I think it's time to go. All right, I'm going to start climbing with my climb speed. Capesco, right. will you put the, my grappling hook up on the rail? Yeah. Dude, how, how, much of a, how much of a... How, how high is the ship? Yeah, how is that? Uh, let's see. I think there's a thing, the scale is five feet. Let me see if there's an actual listing for how high these th these things are. Mm -hmm. Ah, here we go. It has a length of nearly 90 feet, a beam of 26 feet, a draft of 8 feet, and stands 9 feet above the waterline to the top of its main deck rails, and 17 feet above the waterline to the top of both of its forecastle and poop deck. So that would mean that it is... At least nine, maybe ten feet above your heads at the moment. Okay. From where you guys are. I can. I yeah, that's half of my climbing speed, so I can get there no problem. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I'm, I just take the grappling hook in my mouth and I'm gonna climb up. Is this guy close to the railing? Yes, he does appear to be. Roll a stealth check. Okay. And did. I noticed the people that Roland was trying to point out. It may not matter. Well, 
No, you can't see the people for, from there. You're at, a, you're at the wrong angle. Um, okay. As you begin your climb, the the guy right here suddenly turns around and beams over, over the, the edge. And it, as, soon as, I know, he, he, as soon as I notice he sees me, I'm grabbing a shirt and throwing him in the water. All right. Uh, at... Roll a, a dex... Um, let see. What is it? Uh, acrobatics to see if you can... Uh, no, sorry. Athletics to see if you can... Oh, roll actually both an athletics and an acrobatics for me. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Okay. You definitely grab... And the acrobatics? That's not terrible. That's good. You're, you're still st you're still steadying yourself by one hand on, on the on the thing. Uh, and I'm gonna hook the grappling hook on the edge and climb up. So, gonna um, cast heroism on. Are on we just stating back. actions now, or are we initiating? One second. We we'll get there. I just wanted to roll to make sure this guy didn't. Yeah, this guy did not make that. He com you you caught him completely off guard, and he lets out a cry. Uh, he lets out like one sharp cry. That uh, before he comes tumb tumbling over the tumbling. edge, yeah, sweet ah, splash, and the creepers immediately go to work. Sweet. This guy over here gonna... though suddenly pull pulls out his uh, weapons and, and just starts yelling. Ding. Yeah. Yes, it sounds speed up. Uh, Lobu oh, Topaz, which of you are going up on that grappling hook first? I'm not going up the grappling hook. I'm spending a key point for step of the wind. Oh. Be able to take dash as a bonus action and double my jump distance. I'm just basically doing a flipper jump Excellent. and coming up right out of the water onto the deck and immediately trying to catch that guy by surprise and pulling the same maneuver on him that Capesta did. Yeah, because to... he was looking towards Capesta. He wasn't looking towards you. Go for it. All right. Athletics? Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's see. And then acrobatics. No, no. Acrobatics was to see if you were holding, still holding on even when you were oh, being okay. unbalanced by the weight. Okay, cool. Yeah, I don't know why, but it, it, it automatically toggled and never to, to whispering rolls, so it keeps showing things in whispers instead of showing them to everybody. Yeah, he did not make that, and he also goes screaming off the off the edge. Calling down to the equippers, dinner. Yeah, and now we begin initiative as people on the ship start you know, hearing this, and. <laughs> Yes! You guys up above hear you and are getting ready to. Pesk lets out his familiar war cry. Alright, let me get these tokens it set up should. now that I know that they're, they're stupid things are whispering. Okay. Not as high as I would like, but you know. Oh, there's other lizard folk here? Yep. Dead. Yes! This is revenge. Oof, they're rolling pretty good initiatives. <laughs> and I've got two more. Hold on. Oh my god. Good. This is good. You and I have very different definitions of good. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. So eight people in total. And some of these aren't showing up on initiative thing because they're still rolling secret. Oh, they rolled terribly. <laughs> anyway. Bandits gets to go first. Let's see, where is that bandit? Oh. So you hear sh shouting from above. It says, Captain, we've got intruders! Oh, we didn't ah! take the captain out. Dang it. We must have gotten the first mate, he yells. Oh, cool. As At least we didn't kill the captain by accident. As he brandishes his, his light crossbow and aims it towards Topaz. 16 hit? 16 does not hit. <laughs> Monks. So, a door bangs open over here. 
bang. And a lizard <coughs> lizard man comes strolling out. <sighs> brandishing a what its weapons immediately runs at Kapesk. Your hatred. Let's do this. It's holding a spiked shield and a heavy club and just goes swinging at it with, with its club. Uh, second one... Uh... Yeah, heavy club, heavy club. Yeah, the first one hits, the second one doesn't, so four damage. Right. Topaz. Alright, what's this guy over here? Human, or...? First to be a human. <laughs> Alright, um... Yeah, I'm gonna step over here to him. And... See if I can throw him overboard, too. Nice. Those, those quippers are all uh, feeding well. All right, he's got his hands full. He's got a... Hang it. Let's see here. And it's strength. Yeah. You pick him up with ease and just go, kind of launch just him over. Flip him. Ah! Yeah. Calling down to the quippers, eat faster. <laughs> Dovin. Is this a door? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, okay, then I'm probably gonna stay here. Mm, now I'm gonna run here. This is the the mast, I'm guessing. Okay, so I'm going to kind of like half hide behind the mast. All right. And then I'm going to cast uh, Frostbite on this guy. The Constitution save. Yeah, he feels like hey, it works! It actually worked! <laughs> so you take five damage and he has disadvantage on his next attack. comes running down from uh, from up here, brandishes his light crossbow, and lets out a lets out a bolt towards Dovin. Ah! Uh, you're in, you're, in, you're in half cover from that direction, so it's actually the ten. Nice. Misses. Thuds into the mast. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Another lizard folk steps out from under here, sees Kapask, and immediately runs towards him. Wham, wham. Yes, that one hits. Smashing into, into your side with its heavy club. And now it's time for Noxie. I'm gonna poke my head out of the barrel with a crossbow and shoot <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. It's a perfect sneak attack place. <laughs> yes, and, and you get sneak attack, which means you also get advantage because that guy doesn't know you're there. That's hilarious. Oh, oh nice. Oh, oh yes. You let wow. the crossbow directly through this guy's eye from the side, and he just topples over uh, overboard, just co collapsing into the water with a big splash. I'll slip they have less than twenty health. I'm going to slip back into the barrel. <laughs> <laughs> Which effectively hides you. Kapesk. Alright. Uh, I hate these guys. I really do. I'm going to swing at the one to the left of me with my... Hold on. That does not write. Hold on. I was fixing something. Okay. There we go. Ooh. Sweet. Nice, max damage. Yeah, you, you catch this guy right, you know, in the side. Your, your blade just, like, sinks right in, casts a couple of scales. He's still alive? See, oh, yeah, and you see blood just dripping down him as he grimaces. All right, bonus grimaces. action bite. Yes! Uh, however, once he, once he grimaces and tries looking up at you, your jaws just come out and grab it right by the neck and rip. Immediately, this gush of, like, of blood just comes torrenting out. 
I'm going to throw the, the body overboard, and I'm just going to look straight at the um, the other uh, lizard folk next to me. Uh, Snarl at him. I don't have an extra action, unfortunately, for throwing him overboard uh, on this turn. Okay. Okay. Then I'm just going to snarl at the other lizard folk next to me. All right. And I'm definitely going to be ch changing my, my batteries in this mouse soon, because this, th this is ridiculous. I keep getting lagged from uh, the mouse itself. All right, next bandit. Yeah, another guy comes running down here. Uh, just in time to see Topaz tossing over a companion into the water. Then goes, ah, shit, shit, shit! We got sea elves! And just runs at her with his scimitar. That is a hit. <laughs> Seven. You see, the guy just kind of, you know, out of fear, just manages to slash right into your side as well. But fortunately for you, it doesn't do nearly as much damage as what the Capestus did to that lizard man. Alright. Oh, well, this guy's a special token. Meanwhile, yeah, you see a halfling poke his head o over the side of uh, of the, uh, the deck up here, like, up above. He goes, This does not look good. He... He mutters, and you see his hands flash, and he launches a spell. Uh oh. Uh, let's see, what will he bust at you? Because uh, you seem to be like a big threat, Volan. He launches a ray of frost at you. Huh? Oh, he's a magic dude. I'm gonna give him a good laugh. And it just kind of <laughs> smashes into the deck next to you, and the little halfling just kind of raises his, his eyebrows and it bring, brings his head back up over, over the side. Lobu! First thing I want to do is uh, climb up on the deck, and do I need to roll for that? No, you got a grappling hook. hook. Yeah. You leave, the, you leave the struggling bodies behind as the clippers are just devouring everything in sight. And then, can I pull up the, pulling up the rope, would that be a full action or a bonus? Uh, I'll treat that as a bonus action. Cool. I'll do that, and then I'll um, help Kapesk in his next attack. And then that'll be my turn. All right. Volin. Remind me where that halfling was real quick. Uh, he's above your head on the, the deck above, which this bandit over here is standing on the stairs for. But, you know, if you also can have we, a way of getting... Go ahead. Can we reveal that now that we can uh, see above Actually, deck? no, it's because it's light, plus this over here is inside, is showing inside that, whereas the deck itself is on the map, is on another section of map over here. All light. And you can't see what's actually up there. You just know that there's a guy up there. Even standing on the deck, we can't see this deck. That's not the deck. That's that that that's interior. That's a room. So it's actually above the 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 deck above is actually above your heads. Is anybody up here? Uh, Volan can kind of make the match. She saw that she saw the halfling and she saw the other guy earlier, but um, they they're kind of like ducked back at now. Some of them are coming down there. Some of them are staying up there. Let's see, where's the edge? okay. I'm going to uh, use my movement to move 20 feet up to the guy on the st All right. Take him off. Spark. I will. Bonus action, rage. <laughs> and then I'm going to come down two-handed with my great axe. Nice. Oh no! The guy grins as you, as you just kind of swipe angrily at, at him, and you just manages to miss. It's ha ha! Nice try, lass. Any other um, attacks you can make? I don't think nope, that's, that's right. it. All right, so the other lizard folk that was in this room back here comes out, 
And it also goes for Kapesk. Apparently, they have a hate on for you, Kapesk. Yeah, no. All lizard people hate each other. Well, not all, but these guys apparently hate you. Generally. Ah, oh, dang it. They always miss one and then hit one. You see blood coursing down Kapesk's Kipes from, from one of his shoulders. I have On the I've part got of the side, just dotting the, uh, the deck from that hit. <laughs> Ooh. Another special token. Yep. This would be the captain. Hey. Seeing if there's anything special comment wise on them. Nope. So, the, uh. You see, briefly, the captain poking his head o o over, over the side, enough for the rest of you to say. There's, uh. uh this is not going to do well. Apparently some some other people have taken over the smuggling thing. <sighs> Too bad, they don't want to work with us. And you see him um, hold up a uh, his uh, crossbow and aiming at Dovin, who doesn't have cover from where, where the captain's at. You wouldn't hurt an old man. And it misses. Here we go. I knew it. Yeah, he wouldn't. Yeah, apparently <laughs> still on Whisper. That mast is getting <laughs> hit left and right. Yeah. Well, this time it was actually at his feet. So that bandit is struggling in the water. Uh, notices the, the, the Quippers, which have just left that body there, and are now heading... For this guy and devouring them, begins to start swimming ar around this way. <laughs> I don't. I don't think he's going to be able to outswim them. They're like screaming, ah, quippers! Quippers in the water! Worst part is that's going to be blood in the water, which probably is going to mean sharks before very long. <laughs> Should get even better. So this attack is at disadvantage. The lizard man starts to swing his club uh, at you again. Yay. Oh, God. Wow. At disadvantage. That's wow. I, oh, oh. I'm, un I'm done. I'm unconscious. Hey, try he, he, grin he grins out at you and, and tries to bite to finish you off, uh, which I believe has an automatic advantage on you. So that's still 15 doesn't hit Oh, no. so you don't lose a death saving throw for that. Good. He bites, but some, uh, for, somehow he manages to bite, <sighs> bite you right at the wrong second and your body, as your body collapses to the ground. And he just Love gets empty air. sucks. Topaz. Alright. Right. Throwing attack quickly at this guy next to us. Try to get him out of the way. If I slam him with the martial arts attack, is there a chance he'll go overboard? Yes, there's a chance. I'll do that as opposed to a spear attack then. Alright. So you go smash! Uh, roll, let's see, and athletics on top of that to see if you have enough force behind it to push him over. I'm gonna call that. Uh, let's see if he can actually stand up to that. No, he cannot. His knees buckle and he flips over backwards with a scream and, cl and crashes out into the water. Splash! Uh, and I'm not done yet. Oh, that's I'm right. Sorry, I keep forgetting. I'm Max, gonna my bad. Call to Volan. Um, you take the captain, or point to the guy that looked like a captain with a fancy hat. Take the one with the fancy hat, and I'm gonna go over here and try to help out with what's going on with Kapesk. Even though I have been watching those lizard man rolls and dread them. Mm -hmm. Does one of them hurt? Uh, the one in front of you is actually hurt. Okay. Yeah, I'll try Dovin to... frostbit it. I will try to spear him. Ho ho! <laughs> it's not good. Your spear just goes slamming directly into its shoulder, burying it into the meat, and you hear the, the lizard man scream out in pain. And just flat, squ 
Sorry, I just slideized to you for, for what was going to be a, uh, a cannibalism attack. All right, that's action, yeah, bonus action, and move. I'm I'm done. Dovin, what would you like to do? Uh, is there a I'm way that I could move here? Is this a movable space? Okay, so I'm going to move here and cast uh, Cure Wounds on my dear friend. Thank you. I have not rolled more than one on any healing spell I've ever cast. This game. I appreciate it, though. The five help, the, the, it helps, it helps. You're five good. Five health keeps you from automatically getting crit and two death saving throws from a single hit. Yeah, so then... Yeah, that definitely helps. With my... I guess with my bonus action, I'll do the... My Druid of the Dreams ability for another two. Another one! Oh, wow. Alright, thank, thank you. I, that means I'll survive <laughs> at least one hit. Yeah, you've received minimum healing from me. I, I did really good. And I'm gonna... Was it one, two, three, four? So I'm gonna go one, two. I have a bad feeling you're gonna be running over there next to me in a minute. See, I don't think I can withstand two of them. Noxy. All right, I'm gonna put my head out of the barrel and shoot this lizard folk. All right. <laughs> nice. So as the lizard folk is just eyeing up Kapesk, now they just come back. There's a sudden thwink, and the lizard folk gets an arrow right through, um, you right basically right through the back of its collarbone, right out. Not an instantly fatal wound, but looks incredibly painful, and you can just see the barb of the of the crossbow just sticking out through its back, right in front of you, Kapesk. Back into the safety of my barrel. It is my home now. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I am we forget and Noxie's there. Yes. We just forget Noxie's there. Pesk. All right. I'm going to first slash at that one. So you still get uh, advantage? What? Oh, I would oh, have to see, my first attack. Yeah, my first attack. Are you kidding? Does that hit? Sadly, no. All right. Well, it's cool. I'll... Bite. Which is not an advantage, so that's just an eight. <sighs> nah, it's fine. All right, so that was a useless turn. <laughs> so this bandit is, is is do you hear the bandit screaming down on the water, churning up blood and just swimming away rapidly, away, trying to get as far away from the quippers as possible. Once again, you see the uh, the halfling just poke its head over the uh, over the edge and scan down below, and go shit shit, Captain, we're we're, lo we're losing men rapidly. Eh, uh, kind of. <laughs> and a sudden um, let's see, how does this one work? Ah, so. You see him point towards the mast, and suddenly a fog cloud spreads through the area. Oh no! It's actually not necessarily a bad thing at the moment. They just blinded themselves too. Yep. Let's go with twenty by twenty. Yeah, but this means I have to leave my barrel. No, it's a 20-foot radius. Mm -hmm. You got 40 feet across. You got the entire deck. Yep. And I have to make it visible for everybody to see. There we go. Oh, I should make a, pick a different color because that matches too much of the background there. Sorry. Uh, I'll use this color. There we go. Yeah. That works. It basically just surrounds the entire deck. Now everybody is uh, fighting in a sphere of fog. Heavily obscured, which means everybody's at disadvantage. Yep. Lubu, fog has surrounded you. 
I would still take an opportunity attack if I moved away, right? No, not if they can't see you. Yeah, if they right. can't see, right, right now, it's like everybody's fighting in, in, in uh, invisible monsters. So Lobu is going to reach out, touch Kapask, and kind of whisper at him, Hey, buddy, I hope you don't die. Um, and cast heroism. What does that do? I'll I'll put out the spell card, but basically you get um, four addition, like four temporary hit points at the beginning of every turn. Oh, sweet! And you're immune to being frightened. Yeah. Nice. And then Lobu is going to uh, dip out of the like. Heavily populated area. All right. Um, and then the, sorry, just one second. Um, the. My bardic inspiration. Can I do that? Um, as bonus, I've forgotten, and I should know this. Absolutely should know this. Uh, Pretty sure it is a bonus yeah, action. A bonus action. Cool. I am going to, um, I'm going to give that to Kabesk too. How are you going to? Wait. How, what are you going to do to inspire him? Going to start playing um, ghostly sort of music in the fog, and the uh, song <laughs> I'm going to play with it is all about. Uh, killing smugglers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kapesk, you have inspiration. Wait. Uh, what does your familiar do, Devin? Uh, Callie's still on Lobu's shoulder. All right. She's just hitching a ride. All right. Ferociously crepping. Villain! All right, I'm going to... Do what Topaz said and climb the stairs up to the next deck. Okay. Which puts you there. And I'm going to run up to the captain and who I will make a reckless attack. He's partially obscured with the fog since the fog cloud is, is getting there. The captain looks like he's in the process of, of backing up. But you see him. He's kind of looking out of the fog, which means, yeah, you you're still have advantage on him. Ooh. Nice. He's very surprised as your uh, great axe comes down and, and strikes into him. Oof. I'll look over to the halfling. I'm gonna say, "You're next, you little." Sh <laughs> 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 that's my actually. I think that's a, the picture is actually a gnome, but I'm still going with halfling. <laughs> Sometimes I have a hard time telling apart gnomes and halflings, even though... Yeah. Oh, God. But right. I'm going to yeah. go with that as a halfling. Okay. Well, I'm about to die again. Let's do this. Lizard folk. Lizard folk kind of s still swaying from the the, uh, the arrow. And let's see. Let's see something here real quick. You, you don't see it because, you know, of the fog, but it uh, turns away from you, sniffing the air, and immediately comes towards the barrel. Oh, no. Um, let's see. It's a disadvantage. Her stealth was 28. No, no, no. Yeah, my see, stealth was... It, 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 it's smelling you out, and because you're... It, because you still were in that barrel. It doesn't really know if you're there or not. All it knows is that, that you were, it was hit from that direction, and there's a concentrated smell of goblin in that way, in that direction. Ah, uh, okay. So it's currently relying on its sense of smell. Um, you have a higher AC at the moment. Uh, we're going to go with um, five additional AC points to your current thing for being protected by a like it. However, Opportunity attack? No. Uh, okay. Darkness. Uh, sorry, because of the I guess, uh, nobody can see. 
But uh, yeah. the barrel, if the if this would hit your normal AC, uh, there's a good chance the barrel might break as it does this. Okay. That hits my normal AC, but does not hit... Yeah, so I guess the barrel breaks. Yeah, the barrel splinters and breaks around you. Oops. <laughs> Little wave. <laughs> and then it attempts to uh, to bite the air. Try it still can't see you because of the fog, and also because you're, you know, crouched in the the ruins. But it is attempting to bite the area. It does not hit. Focus. Not happy about that. Yeah, the, the captain moves around you, uh, bleeding, and says, uh, "Good one. You f you fight well." And uh, drops his crossbow, pulling out uh, his uh, his longsword. I think the 23 hits, maybe? Yeah, and I take half damage? From Rage. Yep, yeah, you only take three hit, three, three points of damage. Bandit. Let's see, where's that bandit? Oh, right there. The bandit is still trying to swim feebly around the ship as the Quippers finish that one and go streaking towards this one. You hear sudden screams from the water as the, the Quippers claim another meal. I love it when a plan comes together. Hmm. Let's see, this lesser folk is fixated on where Topaz, last saw Topaz, and it kind of swings out at her with disadvantage. God, yeah. It's probably going to drop me. It does drop me. That's the same wall. Connect. Holy, yeah, exactly. These lizard folk are rolling insane. Yeah. And then attempts to bite the air to 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 to, to, to rip flesh as you fall, which misses. Thankfully, uh, that eight was was exactly your your HP, wasn't it? Yeah. Which means you're actually, you're technically stable then, um, unless it you know hits you. You don't have to roll death saving throw if you're not picked up right away. But, you know, if this thing hits you, you lose death saving throws. So, yeah, you're 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 currently fine. You don't have to roll anything. Alright. Dovin. Did you, you, I? Yeah, you probably would have heard a, a, a thump, um, followed by a, a, some sort of hissing chuckle from the lizard man, and realizing that likely one of your party members has been hurt. Okay, so I'm going to move carefully... Like half speed, right. um, and try and feel around to find Capesk and Topaz. Uh, roll an investigation check at disadvantage. Shit, got this. Mm -hmm. All right. You grab hold of, of someone's scaly ankle. They they are definitely standing upright. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Okay. Um, that doesn't feel like Topaz. <laughs> well, you seem okay. So Topaz, you need moisturizer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, she's talking about yeah, either Capesca or the other lizard folk. <laughs> either way, it's not good. Ah. It could totally okay. be the other one. I'm gonna give him another bomb. So yeah, that, 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 the three healing definitely leaks into Capesk. Oh, thank God! <laughs> hey, you rolled another one. I did. I did. It's amazing. I'm a boy. <laughs> a two. I doubled it. Wow. Um, so then I'm gonna, uh, I guess, use my action to find. Topaz. All right. So after an another moment, you manage to to locate her on the ground. She seems to be breathing okay, but th but she is unconscious. Okay. And I believe that's both action and bonus action. <laughs> Noxie. The bear right. that you were using for cover is now disintegrated around you. What do you do? Out of rage of losing her new home. 
Moxie is going to come at this scissor folk <laughs> with daggers in hand. Oh. Now do I get <laughs> like to reach. Is it just normal? Uh, is it just normal? Because I have I would have advantage because I'm hidden, but also I have disadvantage because because yeah, so I can't. This is, I, so is this a straight straight roll at the moment? Okay. Which misses. All right, and then offhand. And Ooh. So that's just so two. So you hear you hear Big a, two a cry of pain from from the a sudden cry of pain from the lizard folk as you manage to stab the dagger into into its thigh. And then I would like the bonus action. Well, no, I just no bonus action. I just move. Trying to get up the deck. Actually, roll a perception check for that. Okay. A disadvantage. Sorry. Oh. Just roll again. Yeah, yeah. You definitely yeah. fight that man. Nice. Despite the dark, despite the fog, and that you've never been on the ship before, you managed to make it all the way over to, over to the, uh, the stairs. You are one clever goblin. Yeah, I want to make it up the stairs because I still have movement. All right. You emerge out of the fog and see a, you see a pirate's captain squaring off with Volan. All, All right. right. Then I would like to bonus action hide. You <laughs> just... already used your bonus. Oh, that's right. You didn't need to use your bonus action. Never mind. Yeah, yeah that was just hide. my movement. No, you used your bonus action for the offhand attack. Oh, oh yeah, I did. So yeah. The attack, yeah. Yeah. So I don't have a bonus action. My bad. Yes. All right. That's okay. Can I, like, similarly to the other lizard folk, try and smell uh, to see if I can smell the blood on this guy? Because he's been hit before. He's he's close enough to you that you can find him, since you're already standing here when he's like, been here. So I'm just trying to like remove the disadvantage or something like that. Oh, okay, then uh, roll per roll perception check. Okay. With disadvantage uh, because of the fog. I'm using my smell. That wouldn't the fog wouldn't affect my smell. I always find that fog affects smell, but oh, well. really? Well, yeah, I'll I'll let you have that. Okay. Yes. I was, I was just thinking in real in real life, it, you know, the extra water molecules tend to hamper. But yeah, you basically don't even need to worry about it as you just swing your blade around and you hear. A thuck, and just the body in front of you drops to the ground, and there's another smaller thud, and then something that seems to hit into a door nearby. Okay. Um. Shoot. Do I know where this lizard went, and like what direction he went? Uh, roll another perception check at disadvantage. Right. No, yeah, probably you're, you're not. not sure. <laughs> okay, well, I saw the stairs before the smoke came up, right? Yes. You know I'm that... just going to start running wildly in this direction. Yeah, since, since you're um, right next to the, the rail, you can do that. Well, and I, I can feel the steps, right? Like, yep. with my feet. All right, I'm going to go up. And <laughs> these, roll, these guys got... There's... Roll an acrobatics check as you get up the stairs. Oh, am I going to fall over? Uh, you, you get up here and nearly and, and start and accidentally ram into the goblin that's that, that's crouched up here. Ah, shoot! <laughs> because of the fog, you didn't see her. Sorry, Noxie. Sorry. Oh, am I in range of this guy? Uh, Hold yes, up. but uh, yes, but you're distracted by the go by, by tripping over the goblin. Ah, uh, okay. I was gonna bonus action bite, but yeah, that's cool. All right. All right, I'll move out of your space next turn. Oh, uh, you're good. Bandit. All right. You, you hear a you hear a final scream and c soft cry of pain from the water as another bandit dies. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> so a small ha halfling type uh, c c moves back from the fog, sees uh, the the, uh, the the lizard man tripping over the goblin over here. This guy, ah, they're up here! Damn it! And, um, let's see here. What will he do? Yeah, he pulls out a, a, a small twig and just kind of waves it at you guys all of a sudden, and a beam of crackling blue energy lances your direction. Uh, what? That's, let's see. Roll 1d2. At capacity.
Pesk. Is he casting Lightning Bullet at us? Nope. Okay, good. That'd be fucking crazy. <laughs> That'd yeah, it would. Rich Bolt. Mmm. The blue, bl bluish energy lightning just comes. Yikes. Freaking right into you. I have four health left. He's Emperor Palpatineing you. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Connected power! Thank you, Lobu. You saved my life. I would have gone down without the heroism. Lobu does it again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The awesome little bird. Go for it, Lobu. What's your what's your, your move this turn? Um, Lobu kind of doesn't totally understand what's going on, but knows that somebody dropped. A lot of people dropped, and um, a lot of people ran by him. Um, so he's just going to to like um, use his action to put caltrops on the ground here. Okay. And then he's going to back up a step and um, call out into the fog. Hey, uh, I heard you couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. I heard lizard folk are useless idiots. Um, and just like string of insults, just like basic gibberish, but also trying to keep um, the... Towards, oh, actually want... Towards this guy over here? Yeah. So it's not Ever said that. It's just like a string of insults meant to keep this guy knowing exactly where I am at all times. Yeah. That still sounds like vicious mockery. If you can use vicious mockery if you want, but it's a full action to put the caltrops oh, okay. down. Uh, and, and vicious mockery is also an action. It's not a bonus action. Yeah. Okay. I thought about that too. Okay. How much damage do the caltrops do, by the way? Only one point, but my goal is mostly to slow him down and keep him away okay. from Topaz. Callie? So what they what they do is they'll like stop him in place. Alright. Callie's gonna cheer him on because it's fucking <laughs> epic. Pullin, what do you do? Coming down again with the great axe, I'll make a reckless keep attack. Him alive. Keep him alive. Non lethal. Non -lethal. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not there, and I can say that. It's not meta yet. Another, another swipe through him. You see his cl you know, part, part of his jacket just come, come into tatters and more blood welling up from his shirt. And you see a blood grimace on his face. Wow, he's still up after two hits like that? Yep. Dang. Yes, he is. Boss, yes! Yeah, That's my turn. To this, to, to, to this attack. I think you can uh, thank um, Topaz and her, her brilliance for the Quippers. Yeah, for sure. You hear the, you hear the lizard fark charging forward and suddenly screeching as, as it reaches the caltraps. <laughs> he does technically get a, 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 a um, dex 15, but I'm not sure if that's applicable if he can't see. Yeah, he can't see them, so it doesn't really matter. Hi, Dex. Kitten has come to visit. Now I forget with Caltraps, can he still move or is he stuck in place because of the injury? I believe he's stuck in place. Okay. Me too. Yeah. Alright. So the captain kind of swallows hard. <sighs> Enemies all over. But you'll not take <clears throat> you'll not take me off to jail. And he just comes swiping at you with his uh with his two-handed sword. With advantage. Advantage toggle. Oops. Oh. Hmm. I wonder, does that hit you? And it's yes. roll twice. <laughs> I was trying to roll an advantage. But yeah, that hits you. Why does it get advantage? She I made a reckless attack. But you only oh, take one okay. point of damage because you're raging. Eat barbarians. Go rage. <laughs> barbarians and monks, yeah. Early game, they're insane. So you hear another final scream from the bandit down below as the Crippers finally reach him. It's particularly bad when you combine them. I ran into that once. <laughs> 
raging monk. That sounds so cool. <laughs> it sucked to be on the receiving end of it, let me tell you. Okay, that one's dead. Topaz, you're still unconscious. Dovin! You're still holding on to Topaz at the moment. Alright, I'm gonna give her a good old cure win. Six. Hey. So yeah, Topaz, you finally get launched back into your consciousness after being having been downed by that lizard folk whose body is next to you. Come on, buddy. I don't have time to sleep yet. And I'm going to stand up and kind of find my footing on the railing, find my balance on the railing, and try and make my way towards the stairs away from the fog. Do you climb up the stairs or you stay there? Uh, I can only move here because I was um, I was prone looking for a topaz. Okay. Noxy, you're still kind of tangled up with with uh, Kapask. I'm one of the bonus section disengaged to kind of get out of melee of this guy. All right. And then I'm going to shoot a crossbow bolt at... Yes, take the mage out. Yeah, the mage person here. Yeah. Uh, just normal, right? Normal, because, yeah, he sees you. All right. No. Oh, that actually hits. Oh, oh. wow. Wizards, that, dude, wizards. The halfling now, now sports a, a big... Um, a big crossbow bolt, bolt in its shoulder. And I have to roll for concentration to see if it retains its spell. <gasps> nope! Huzzah! Uh, fog it goes down. And as the fog <laughs> clears, to uh, Topaz, you see that this lizard man next to you's body might be laying there. However, its head is over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, that's my turn. So in, the blood splatters, I see, in the blood splatters, I see across the door, Capesk. <laughs> yeah. She just hear this war cries in the distance. Yeah. Kapesk, what do you do? Oh, sweet. All right. Can I move here and get flanking? Sure. Sweet. That is what I shall do. Now swing. And I'm going to just cause use my inspiration for the damage. You can no. do that, right? Uh, it's only for no. animals. I Just think like I'm thinking. I think I'm thinking a specific subclass of bard. Never mind. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. Never mind. I still have inspiration. Yeah, there's, there's Eight blood. damage. There, there, there's like blood all down his back now from from your attack. He's all right, and I'm gonna bonus back. action non of non lethal bite. All right. So you take your jaws and you just kind of clamp down on the back of his shoulder. He lets out a piercing scream and he looks like he's about to pass out. He's still alive. Goodness gracious. Okay. Yeah. That's my he's turn. still alive, but it doesn't look like he's going to be for long. Not like this. <laughs> the halfling wizard, wizard looks shocked at the at, at you know just the lizard man biting the back of his captain, uh, and 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 is th thinking rapidly here. And he does not think well. He just kind of like, you know, he just kind of glares at Kapesk. And let's see if I can get this thing. Ah, I hate when that happens. Can't get all. I can't see a spell list at the moment. <laughs> Do it right now. Fireball. No, I don't have a fireball. Ah. He like points his his hand out at you. Let's see, no. He um points some kind uh. Ah, yeah, he puts some kind of uh, leaf at you from his pocket, uh, like a pesk. And... Oh, me? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Pack word kill. And cats. <laughs> Melf's acid arrow. Oh, of Keep course. An arrow just comes streaking right out at you. Actually, a 21 doesn't hit. I'm kidding. It does. Um, that's a lot that's of damage. Uh, yeah, it is. And it is enough to take me out. Yes, and roll a dexterity saving throw as you're falling, uh, as you're going um, unconscious. There, I want to see mm -hmm. where you land. 
Yeah. Uh, you, you tumble backwards off the ship, and there's a huge oh, no. splash, and you because of the height that you fell from, uh, you also instantly lose a death saving throw. Um. Okay. Bye, guys. <laughs> boo boo. Those quippers are gonna kill you. Yeah, Lobu, uh, Lobu is still like kind of mumbling insults at this guy as the fog cloud clears, and then suddenly they're staring each other in the face, and he's like, "Well, uh, um, I think it's uh, it's time for me to go." And then he's gonna jump off the boat in the direction of where he heard Kapesk land, um, and do a. Healing word. So as Kapeska is starting, is starting to sink towards the bottom, the 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 uh, the, hat, the the sea elf just jumps down over over the edge and immediately, like you know, wa waves his hands and just, like you know, yells in his language and he healing energy just starts flooding back through the, through him. Mm. All right. At least I'm safe from any damage. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. The What's Callie doing? Yeah, what is Callie doing? Uh, Callie's actually going to hop on to... Okay. Volan. The captain looks severely injured. Like, like a stiff breeze would possibly kill him at this point. What would you like to do? I am going to make, oh, hopefully... Face. One last great axe attack, reckless. Um, GM will note that any significant damage with a, with a great axe at his current health health book will not be um, uh, non lethal. Yeah, I, I basically, uh, you 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 know how pistol whipping <laughs> usually just knocks people out, but sometimes can kill somebody if they're in critical condition. Or have like sure. Other, yeah, I basically treat it like pistol whipping. It's not meant to be lethal, but it can kill people. What about... Just punch him. Yeah. I mean, does it look like he's that hurt? He looks like he's at death's door. Okay, I'm, I'll am i punch him in the face? Go for it. <laughs> Non-lethal punch. How do I punch? What would that be? Uh, Strength, and if you're doing reckless, it's... Uh, you, yeah, it's you just advantage. roll... Yeah, you roll regular strength and uh, proficiency modifier, and the damage is one plus your strength modifier. So, do you have proficiency in unarmed? Everybody has a proficiency in unarmed. So that means mm. you also add your proficiency bonus to that, don't you? Yeah. So it's the roll plus your strength plus your proficiency. So you have plus four in strength, so it should be just a roll plus six. Okay. So you definitely hit him. Uh, you don't need to roll anything else because he only had one HP left, and he sinks to the. Oh, ground. yeah, that would have been big bad. Yeah, that's what I said. If you attacked him with that axe, you would have been instantly. You would have probably decapitated him at that point. Oh, boys! I was one point away or from simply, knocking him out. Or, or, or simply smashing his head in, but um, either way. Either way, pretty bad. Um, and I'll use five feet of movement to get up in the halfling's not face. Just, you know, because they're not tall <laughs> enough to, but, um, yeah, just. Tower over this little, this little gnome, or halfling. Yeah, I thought halfling, but I'm looking at the picture now, it's probably a gnome, however, I'm still going with halfling, because I said halfling first. Maybe he's half and half. He could Ooh. be. It's he's not half super short. A gnomeling. The lizard folk okay. moves over here and looks over the edge. And he shouts out, COWARD! Towards Lebu. Uh, apparently oblivious to the other people who are around currently. That bandit's dead. Topaz, what would you like to do? Alright, he's about to not be oblivious to me. I'm coming up here. Laying into him. Spear. Instantly Damn. impaled through the heart. Basically, you take your spear, you stab through his back, 
and his heart is basically on the other end of your spear now. It's shoved compl- all the way through. And that was... Check my distances mm-hmm. here. 5, 10, 20, 25, 30. Um, you feel his weight just pulling down on your arms just from, the, from being dead. I have 10 feet of movement left. Can I get up and over that... Um, up and over into the... Up? Sure. You have that, jump, that, that jumping ability, so I'll give you that. Well, I have a quick speed... And good acrobatics. I, I'm not yeah, going to use so, a key point on it. Yeah, I'll, I'll just give you that. You just kind of jump and scramble up there and immediately right into the, to the wizard's face. Oh, there's a wizard there. Perfect. Bonus action. I kick him in the head. Hello there. <laughs> and you don't even need to lift your leg very high because he's a small guy. Who seems to be getting dizzy from all the attacks at this point. Dovin! Um, I'm going to go ahead and go up the stairs. So that puts me right here. Yep. And I see the captain's unconscious. Nobody else is around. So I'm going to go ahead and frostbite the wizard. Or sorcerer, or whatever it is. So that's a con save for the wizard. Ooh. Oh my god. Well, I will. The wizard does good con saves. The wizard doesn't seem to be the least bit cold and doesn't even seem to notice <laughs> Dovin as he's busy de- dealing with Topaz and Volan. Sure. <laughs> Half wings and saves. <laughs> rushes in with her daggers. Um, it's normal, right? Actually, a bit advantage. Topaz is flanking. Oh, oh yeah, I see that. All right. You bring you you come up from behind the wizard as the wizard is just turning towards Topaz, and sink your dagger directly into his back, and just manage to get right into one of the vital spot spots right back there, and the, the wizard just kind of... Uh, 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 and just sags to the ground, dead. Boy, the <laughs> fuck out of this wizard. <laughs> there you go. Come around. Any more? Is that it? Might be some below deck. I heard some working. I don't know if they came up, the though. The Crippers are satisfied with their, with all the food that's been dropped to them and dispersed. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah. That was close. That was real close. Is it Kabas' turn? I assume that one over there is still alive. Well, there might be people below deck. They are not currently in combat with you. Uh, the captain is still start. alive, but he is unconscious. Lobu looks Oxy over to Topaz and is like, carry me up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Lobu gets on Kavaz's back and he's just going to climb up. Oxy's going to look around for another barrel. <laughs> I'm going to go over okay. and grab the, cap- the captain's hat. Keep nice. that in my hand as I start heading down below decks. See well, uh, hang, hang on. We got to... I'm going to cast Goodberry. Oh, I got some fish, too. Yeah, so let's distribute. I've got ten berries, ten points of healing that can be distributed as as needed. And we should tie up the captain before he happens to wake up. I can go ahead and do that, and I'll pull out my rope to tie him up. I'm down nine. I think uh, Pesk is... I'm at four health. Or three health. Okay, you're worse than me for sure. I've got 14 fish. Are me and Topaz the only ones that actually got hurt? I think so. <laughs> now, for the, dip, the, the description of where you're at. The tiller is the most prominent feature of this area, rising from the deck about six feet from the stern and having a horizontal arm some six feet long. Against this arm, on the starboard side... And looking close to as a human friend. That was the, the guy you currently have tied up. Never mind. Um, 
So yeah, you don't see anybody there except for the guy you've tied up. There's also a body of a of a, of a halfling laying there on the ground. There is also a discarded bullseye lantern with a shutter on it. Mm. It looks identical to the one that you have. Right, that's how they're communicating with us. Um, when I got onto the ship, I heard people working down below. I don't know if they're still down there, though. We should probably check it out, uh, after everyone's healed. Are there yes. any barrels on, on deck? No. They're oh, there was, I thought there was also good berries. It was just the fish. Okay. No, there's Sorry, good, I didn't realize there's, that. there's good berries. Oh, there's uh, good berries, so too? There's, there's 15 more hit points available. Does okay. anyone else want that 15? Probably Kapesk. Rolling looks like her? she took a little bit of damage, but Kapes definitely looks the most. How much health do you need, Bowen? I should be fine. But, but how much health do you have? Uh, I have 18 out of 25. Okay, well, you, I'll take 10 and you can take 5. If you're okay, if you're good with that, then. Yeah, I'm fine. I don't need to be full. Lobu's I've got us. second wind, so we're good. If it comes to that. Lobu wants to search the corpse of the... The, the no, wizard? No, half gnome, no. yeah. Alright. Kapes, you coming with me, Kapes? Below. Yeah, I'm going, I'm, going, I'm going back down. So, we, should, we should go with the group. Wait. So pretty much what you find on this wizard is a... Uh, it's a quarterstaff. Um... Doesn't seem to do too much else on it at the moment. Okay, then I'll just start moving with the group since they seem to be going quick. I'm going uh, to take out my shield, by the way. Can I do a quick medicine check on the captain to see, like, when he's going to wake up? If he's going to win? Sure, do a medicine check. I just don't want him slinking off in the middle of the night, in the middle of a fight. Yeah, he, he, he's alive. Uh, he looks like he's just unconscious, and he'll probably wake up on his, on his own at some point. Like how okay. far away? Yeah, like in the next five minutes, or next, like overnight, or? Like probably overnight. Okay, so we, we can leave him there. All right. For now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to start heading uh, under All see right. if those workers are still there. Yeah. What are you going to do with the bodies that are there? The, the two bodies that are left on the deck? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't really care. I figured we could search them afterward. Okay. Yeah, we should leave them there so, for now. For the room that Dovin's looking at, a distinct odor about this room reminds you of a marsh or a swamp. Not fetid, not oppressive, but certainly noticeable. In the center of the area is a wood table bolted to the deck. On the table sits a silver jug half full of red liquid. With, with it are three pewter mugs. Around the table are set three upright wooden chairs and an unlit hooded lantern hangs from the ceiling above. In the gloom, you can see three hammocks, one at each end of the cabin slung between the bulkhead and one of the ship's ribs, and the third across the corner from the cabin from next to the aft door to the cent central bulkhead. It looks like they were recently occupied, probably by the three lizard men that uh, came out from this room. I like this room. If we get this boat, this is my room. <laughs> okay. Nox is going to go into stealth, going to try and like hide and sneak about so that anybody down down deck doesn't Notice her if she walks into the room. Right. Doing the same. Yeah, I guess we'll all do a stealth. It's not advantage. It's I got a twelve. You don't see the sta any of the obvious stairs, but you do see various doors. Is there a particular door you would like to try open? I'm gonna try this. I'll one. open this one right here. Okay, next I'll start. To me. I'll start off with the one next to Noxy. Hmm. 
and the room description is this cabin is clean and its furniture in good repair a single bunk made up with bed linen has its head against the bulkhead running along the center line of the ship next to a wooden partition squaring off the corner near the main deck a writing desk is set against the hull next toward the stern it has a drawer on each side and three trays on top also on the desk just in front of the trays is an ink pot two quill pens a small knife and a pewter container that resembles a pepper pot against the desk is set an upright wooden chair and beside it is a wooden brass bound chest Against the hull on the starboard side is a padded leather couch. In front of that, a bearskin rug lies on the deck, while beneath the couch can be seen a large metal box. An unlit hood lantern hangs from the ceiling. Captain's cabin. Hmm. Chest in a box. Yeah. No workers. As you enter in, Noxie, you notice that there's also a great cloak that's hanging on a peg on the back of the door. Ooh. No one in here. I'm moving on. These are doors. They were doors down here, too. Yep. Yeah, I, I'm checking this one. Alrighty. There's. You see stairs right. going down. Alright, well, that's how we get down, so I'll keep that in mind, and I'll move to the bottom one and let her check this next one. Oh, is that just stairs again? Okay, never mind. Yeah, we'll just check this one then. Alright, and the description for this room is... This seems to be one of the master cabins. The furnishings and fittings are of good quality, and the place is tidy. A single bunk, made up with a bed linen, has its head against the bulkhead running along the center line of the ship. A polished wood table stands in the center of the room, bolted to the deck. On the table is a silvered bowl containing an assortment of fruit, a silver carafe half full of light red liquid, and a silver goblet. Set at the table are two upright wooden chairs and a padded, and a padded leather chair. On the deck, towards the stern, is a wooden brass-bound chest. Beside it is a pair of highly polished black leather boots. From the center of the ceiling over the table hangs an unlit wooden lantern. As you check on these things, though, you notice that the boots are only really likely fit one member of your party. And that would be Noxie. Oh, this is the halfling's room. Uh, I'm going to enter, and uh, I'm going to check out that, that box, wherever that is. All right. Is it open, or do I have to... I am reading that. Hold on. The the box that you're looking at, the chest, happens to be locked. Okay. While they're doing that, I'm just going to be poking around this, looking for any valuables. As for the room that Noxie is in, uh, roll an investigation check. Ooh. All right, so the wooden chest besides the desk is unlocked, but it only contains contains items of clothing, including a well-worn, comfortable pair of slippers. On the writing desk, uh, if, which, uh, next to the pewter container, which is nearly full of fine sand, um, you see, like, you know, one of the slots is empty, another contains bills and receipts for various marine supplies, but the last one contains several letters of a personal and intimate nature from three oh. different women in three different ports, each of which is under the mistaken apprehension that she is Mrs. Sigurd Snake Eyes, which apparently is Mr. Sigurd Snake Eyes is most likely the captain. Oh, wow. and a, you also find a curious semi-literate document requesting a further supply of ironware as per previous consignments and a, at agreed to terms. The signature here is in the form of a pictograph and shows a lizard with a forked tongue extended. Hmm. I'm going to pocket those then. And the uh, letters. The two desk drawers are locked. Hmm. 
I'm gonna okay, go I'm ahead. Gonna Sorry. Oh yeah, you guys can go ahead. I'll... I was I was just gonna say I'm gonna call down into the lower decks and, and say your captain has been bested. Uh, are you just gonna, gonna try to like do that through? Oops, hold on. I think I'm on the wrong. Sp oh, I am on the right map. Uh, gonna just gonna start shouting through that. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, roll it's a just... persuasion check. Can I assist on that? Sure. Hey. Hey. You, you hear a call, a soft call back. All right. <laughs> Leave your weapons down there. Come on up with your hands up. All right. You hear noise and movement from down below. What else are you guys doing as this goes on? Check the these doors gonna, over here. I'm gonna try and open the chest by force, like grab the side and just like force open the the top. All right, Constitution saving throw, please. Constitution. Oh, that sucks. As as soon as you you do that, a cloud of noxious gas in a five foot radius just <laughs> poofs right into your face. Um, oh. You are knocked unconscious. <laughs> but you kind of like, <laughs> like you hear the crash in there, and then suddenly you hear a second crash as Lu as, as Kapesk just collapses to the ground. Oh, buddy, you need to stop learning to. <laughs> you you need to learn to stop messing with wizard stuff. And then Lobu is going to stand on him and look in the chest. That's fine. <laughs> the chest holds. Items of clothing, a leather purse, which you find contains 50 gold, a spell scroll of gust wind. It also contains Ooh. a spell book. Nice. Mm-hmm. Um, he just, like, grabs all the stuff and And you can and just write runs. that one down as, uh, as pirate wizard spell book, and we can look it up later. Nice. Basically going to run all that stuff directly to Dovin. So, yeah. Topaz, as you start going down, you see that you, a crowd of people are, are getting ready to come up, and they all ha have their hands raised at this point, as they see you coming down the stairs. Hey, all right, coming up. Wave the captain's hat at them. Let them go past me. Follow them up. What is, what's down here? I'll give you a description in one second. Various unpleasant odors of a of humanoid occupation complete, compete for recognition here. These crew quarters fill the entire forward part of the deck. A companionway staircase leads up from a point about six feet from the bulkhead. Near it, more to starboard, is a door. Around the perimeter of the cabin, slung between the hooks on the bulkhead and on supporting poles, are eight hammocks. Judging from the way in which they hang, the hammocks seem to be unoccupied at present. Beneath each hammock is a brass-bound wooden sea chest. Most are closed, but two have open lids and apparently contain clothes. In the center of the cabin stands a long, plain wooden table with a bench along each of its long sides. They all appear to be bolted to the deck in an attempt to keep everything in place. The table is stained and, cl and cluttered and has an untidy pile of dirty tin plates and cups roughly stacked in a large tin bucket below. Over the table, hanging from the ceiling, is an unlit hood and lantern. Against the starboard side, an area has been curtained off by cheap, dirty cloth, cloth hangings. Ugh. Pink skin pigs. I'm following up the stairs. <laughs> I'm going to pick locks. Is that where I wanted to be? No. Lobu's going to play a little lullaby over Kapesk for a while, while keeping an eye on the door. Kapesk is starting to come to just as Noxie is, is picking a lock over here. Um, let's see. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Call over to Vola and Noxie over there. So roll your, um, your, your lock picking. 
Oh yeah, you immediately just unlock them without trouble. Excuse me. Uh, the first drawer contains two potions of healing, a dose of antitoxin, and a key. The second drawer contains seven maps of various sea and coastal locations, prepared by professional cartographers. Beneath these is another map, crudely drawn. This map indicates that the rendezvous point with the lizard with the same sort of lawn some kind of rendezvous point. Take your time. And as you're backing away from that, uh, your foot catches a bit on the uh, bear skin rug, and it pushes aside a little, and you see that there's some sort of um, hatch in the floor underneath of it. Just as Kapask is waking up in the other room and Volan's coming to take a look. Mm hmm. Well, what happened? All right, just one quick uh, recap on that. Two potions of healing around... Two potions around... of healing, a dose of antitoxin, and a key. And then seven maps, and then another map under that. Seven professional, professional cartographer maps, and another crude map that seems to be more inland. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to look over at Lobu standing on me. Can... Can you get off of me? Oh, sure, yeah, definitely. Not uh, a problem. <laughs> I, st I stand up. So what, what was in the chest? Uh, mostly wizard stuff. Uh, spell book, a spell scroll of gust, and um, a little pouch of 50 He's gold. I just, I just <laughs> gave it all to Dobin. Okay. Just walk out as soon as he started talking smart things, and <laughs> he suddenly sees a bunch of people. Who, Whoa, were, were those the guys under? They yeah. were the under ones. And, and they they didn't come up with any weapons. They left their weapons behind, as per requested by Dovin. Tell Noxy there's a bunch of chests down here. I counted at least. All right. All right. I'll well, enter the room. Do I see? Do I see her? Or... All they have is clothing. You... Shut up! If I don't want to hear from you, I'll ask you a question. <laughs> Roll intimidation, please, Dopez. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kapeska is looking in at Noxy. And yeah. Noxie is just discovering so, a hatch on the floor. What you Noxie's find? Noxy's pointing at the hatch. Oh, cool. I'm going to try and open it. Does it give? Yeah, one second. Uh, we'll find out. Wait. Yeah, it, it immediately com comes right open as you uh, open that up, and you peer down into another bedroom. Another bedroom? What? Mm -hmm. Why does the captain have a hatch to another bedroom? Yeah, and why is that the only entrance to the... Okay. Do you want to go first, or should I? Noxie will roll right in. All right. That's I'll the follow special up. room. <laughs> She does. He does have three mis mistresses. Mis that's a word I can't say. Three, three wives, actually. But yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I guess I'll follow Noxie down. So, this captain occupies half the stern section of this deck, with one bulkhead running along the center line of the ship. Hold on, let me move Kapesk down there. With you. Center line oh, of, cool. of the, the ship along this bulkhead, leading up in the direction of the bow, is an unclosed. Comp is an enclosed companionway. At its foot is a door to the central bulkhead that leads directly to another part of the stern. On the door hangs a dark blue cloak. A single bunk, the bed linen heaped in a pile, is set against the hull. At its foot is a brass-bound wooden sea chest, its lid closed. Under the bunk is a brass box, also closed. In the center of the cabin, a plain wooden table is bolted to the deck. On it are two books, one open, one propped up against the others. Beside the table is a wooden chair. Hanging from the ceiling above the table is an unlit hooded lantern. Just aft of the hook that holds the lantern is a hatch measuring three feet on a side. That's where we came from? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to gesture to the boxes for Noxy, and while she's inevitably unlocking those, I'm going to take a look at the books and see what they're about. Uh, the books, the, the two books, the one that's open is Principles of Navigation by Da Korma, and the other one, the one that's closed, is called 
Legal Distinctions in Letters of Marquis by Tazar. I'm not interested in either of those. And I'm going to watch Noxie open the boxes. <laughs> I'm going to do. All right. The, that'd be dexterity check using thieves tools. They oh, okay. Lo- the, the, the box box is locked. Okay. Yep. Yeah. And the person who had the key do it is at the bottom of the ocean at the moment. Well, the, what's left of them anyway. <laughs> the box contains mm. 500 silver pieces. It's kind of Ooh, a wow. pile. It's all shiny and sparkly. All right. Noxie will hold on to those for safekeeping. And then... <laughs> Open the other box, right? Is that one yes. less? Let me check to see. Uh, I think there's just the one box. Let me you said there's a second one. We'll pull all of this into party funds oh, later. Oh, once box, we got all. Sea chest. It's loose, closed. There we go. Uh, the sea chest is either locked or trapped. It contains some garments and a pair of boots. Mostly quiet, quite old, but but reasonably clean. The brass box was the one of it that one I, that that had the lock on it. Okay, so I'll just open the other one. I just had clothes in it. Oh, okay. Okay. Alright, then. Uh, through this door. Or we can cut yeah. to the other characters, if you like. We'll cut to the other characters. Yeah. Really. So, Volin, uh, you, sorry, Topaz, you've uh, been searching the, the, the people. Uh, roll me a 1d100. Okay. That's exciting to hear. Yeah. You, you disar- they didn't, they weren't armed, but in collecting their patches, you managed to amass 65 pieces of gold altogether. All right. I'm basically just throwing those in a pile over by the mast. I'm just going to add them to party funds right away so we don't lose track of them. That will, that's what was on their person, right? Not what was in the room. That was what's on their persons, yeah. Okay. Topaz, if you want, I could head down with you and uh, I could bust them open. Those, uh... What are they? Just yes. they just, just they look like small chests, like crew use. I doubt there's much of value in them, but I'm going to take a look anyway. Looks look, look so. over at them, the ones that are that are sitting on the deck. You have keys. Oh, you're talking to them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they start shaking their heads. No, the, the captain never trusted us with any keys. All right, too bad for you then. We yes, should. Um, we should secure them before we. Oh, they're send. secure. They're not going anywhere. Go ahead and jump over the side. The fish need more to eat. And I'll point over at some of the chum that's still floating out there. That's what's left of the other ones that did it. Oh, uh, Topaz. Um, maybe we could make them useful on their new ship. Might be. What were you getting paid? Uh, they they kind of look at each other. Well, well, one of them says we 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 were getting a, you know, a cut of, of you know the captain's action. Uh, there's probably some ledgers somewhere in his in his cabin that states exactly how much you know each of us was owed. But you haven't actually been paid anything. Well, you just took our money. Another one. <laughs> That's what we've been pay- we've been paid, but you know it's it it varies. It depends on uh, on how much the the captain makes from from the um, from the whole ordeal. Tell you what, if you behave, we'll consider employing you. Um, no one will speak up at this point. We did have specific instructions from one of the council members, you know, to turn them in. You oh, see, we did. I wasn't there for see, that. You see, Grim look. On, on the faces of the, the various people in here. Sorry, but I don't want to become, uh, you know, outcast in the eyes of the... Fair enough. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, buds. Alright, we should tie you up. Looks like you'll be stretching rope before long. We'll find sailors other, other in another bar. But thanks. We could also put them in a room and I could lock the door. I've got a little lock. Let's hop, we'll put him in the swampy room. 
To, Perfect to, idea. Swampy room, in you go. Mush. Do any of these people look significant at all? Like, I know one of them has a different... Roll a perception thing. check. <laughs> perception? Yep. Besides the fact that one of them appears to be female. I could be completely wrong. I can't even tell the genders of half of these people. Yeah, this one's definitely uh, different from the others. I'll um, hold them outside the room. Yeah, they, What's they, your name? They, they hold the, their, their hands up. Uh, oh, hold on one second. Sorry, the, the nearly invisible sheets are just kind of getting in the way. Uh, I, I'm, um, Fowl, they say. Fowl? Yeah, Fowl. Nice to meet you, Fowl. My name's Dovin. Yeah. Uh, how did you end up on this ship? Well, I'm the, the bosun here. Uh, they, um... By the way, when you uh, took the patch off of this person, uh, you also found a key inside. Uh, What's this to? It's it's just to my personal lockbox. Is that the one down in the room where I found you? Uh, no, I, I have my own room. I, I'm the bosun here. I I uh, you know rate my own room. I don't I don't sleep with the even the, the, the hammocks with the rest of these people. Part of my ignorance, but, uh, what did the bosun do? Uh, GM is currently spacing on that, even though GM was overhearing <laughs> this a while, not, not long, too long ago, during a pinge listen session of uh, episodes. It's a, it's, it's a ship's officer in charge of equipment and crew. There we go. I knew it was something important that I was remembering at the time and thinking, that sounds cool, and then I immediately forget, as soon as we get to this part. <laughs> so what, so the foul just looks a little more well-dressed? Basically? Yeah, they do. Okay. Well, where's your room? Uh, it's, um, down below. Uh, I can, I, I can show you if you want. Let's go. Just seeing if there's anything, uh, specific about handouts when it comes to this character. Is there a window in that room? There doesn't appear to be any windows. Ah. Yep. I think the Pascal currently ready. No, that that wasn't the bosun's room. That was the first mate's room. Uh, okay. So, yeah. uh, okay. Meanwhile, Capasca Noxy uh, wander into the following description. Lantern light reveals an order orderly cargo hold. Through the center runs the base of a main mast. Beside it, narrow wooden stairs lead up to the hatch above. Against the aft bulkhead are stacked bolts of cloth lashed by ropes to the brackets bolted to the deck so that they are secure. On each side are stacked a large number of small casks, also secured by ropes to the deck. Hmm. Is this a room right here? I'm sorry, what? Can you repeat that? Is this a room right yes, here? Yes, that's another door. I look up at Noxie and point at the door. Alright, she's gonna to... clamber over there. I will follow and go around, because I'm too big for that. In this description, In the center of the cabin sits a plain wood table, on which stands a pewter flagon and a pewter mug. Beside the table is a wooden chair, and hanging over the table is an unlit hood lantern. Also hanging from the ceiling, at the aft end of the cabin, is a large cage that holds a parrot, apparently asleep. Next to the hull hangs an unoccupied hammock. Beneath its brass bound, relief in it is a brass bound wooden sea chest. Sea chest, open the sea chest. <laughs> I'm gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna watch her, look at the parrot, and lick my lips. Is it locked? Uh, it's unlocked and contains grubby garments of no value. But concealed by the garments is an iron box. It appears Ooh. to be locked. 
Okay, I will open this up. Wait, I'll try the key <laughs> on this first. You don't have the key. The, the people above have the key. She no, found a key in the captain's room. Oh, sorry. No, that, that key does not seem to work on that. Okay. I'm going to try to pick it then. Yes, yep. these it rolls are really unlocks, good. And you find another 200 silver pieces. A spear, mm. a dagger, and the remains of a crossbow. Remains of one. <laughs> yep. It looks like it's way too damaged to repair. Just like bits and pieces of a crossbow. Alright, the rest of this is useless, just the silver. Yeah. And, and then I assume this goes to another room that we were just in. Yeah. And as you're standing okay, around cool. talking to each other um, you know, about this, you uh, you know, hear a, a, a thin voice just kind of uh, speaking some language you, Kapesk and Noxie, have not, do, do not understand. However... Kapesk and Noxy, you both recognize the language immediately because it sounds like what your two sea elf companions sound like when they are talking to each other above water in their own language, not elvish. Awkward. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna get in front of Noxy just in case, and I'm just gonna. Is it is it coming from the door? It's coming from the from from the wall over here. I'm gonna. St- Tap on the wall to see if it's hollow. Um, roll a survival check. Hmm. I can't seem to find the right spot. Uh, I'm going to... Roll a perception take... check. Okay. <sighs> Alright, uh, let's see what that says. Yeah, um, you may have failed like tapping on it, but as you as you double check and look around, you finally notice that there's a small gap in the panels here. I'm gonna take my shield and shove it in the gap, and I'm just gonna push it to open it up. All right. Like leverage it out. All right. A dark, cramped area, only four feet wide at most, is squeezed in between the ship's stern and the adjacent cabin. It appears to be a holding cell. A slim, humanoid figure cowers in the far corner, chained to the hull. And this is definitely a sea elf. Being companions of two of them, you recognize the the breed right away. I walk in. In fact, it appears to be a male sea sea elf. Um, I'm going to gesture to Noxy. Can you undo the chains and stuff? Noxie nods and she attempts to do that. Oh. Uh, they're probably locked, so. Yes, they are definitely locked. Alright. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, with that roll, you take your thieves t- tools immediately, go to work at it. And it's only, a- it's only after you finish unlocking them that it suddenly occurs to you. Wait a second. You got that key in the captain's cabin, didn't you? Uh, oh. Well, you know. It well, for the first mate cabins, you you find a key, near, an, an interesting key nearby. <laughs> but He's anyway, from the but anyway, that the, the, the gonna... chains are unlocked, and the the the, the sea elf just immediately <laughs> it, t- immediately tugs you. But they seem he seems like fairly weak and like he's just breathing heavily. I'm gonna hold him uh... up and help him walk. Uh, we ha- what's your name? He just kind of stares at you and, and not comprehending. Okay. Uh, we should probably take the, him back to our friends. Maybe they can talk to him. She nods. We will try. Gonna, these are yeah. These are stairs. So we're gonna walk yeah. up the stairs with Me- him. Meanwhile, yeah. said friends, uh, you've been interrogating Fowl. Uh, you've uh, we're given, you've, you figured out that you have a key for something that Fowl has. What do you do now? <clears throat> Following her to a room. So they, are you kidding? They start, <laughs> they, they start heading, we, we don't know you're all already there. Figure, so they start yeah. heading in this direction just as Capex, Noxy, and the prisoner, or the former prisoner, uh, come up the stairs, kind of startling Fowl. Going, like, hey, this came out of... Oh, this is not good. Yeah, it is. Move, and, out, move to, over, slaver. And, and Topaz and, uh, and Lobo, you immediately see a, a sea elf a very yeah, tired, ragged-looking sea elf being being helped out by Noxie and Kapesk. 
Do they look familiar? Uh, roll a perception check. <laughs> mm, no, you, you don't think you've ever seen this guy before. Do they look injured? Roll a medicine check. Yeah. While he's checking in on that, Lobu's gonna just immediately start speaking in Aquan and be like... He, I'm gonna say, he only speaks your guys' language, so... I'm gonna help him over and like lay him down next to the mast so we can rest a little bit. So yeah, he he doesn't look like he's hurt. It just looks like he's been um, you know kept prisoner a while. He's blinking up at the sky. Well, he's not, actually the sky is dark. Sorry. So he, he's like kind of blinking around um, and just kind of like looks over at, at Lobu and and Topaz and seems to be sighing with relief, seeing you know fellow sea elves. And he starts talking back in 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 um. And Aquaman saying, oh, thank Woos. Uh, finally, uh, free from that cell. Those two, and he kind of looks over at Noxie and Kapask and says, th th those two rescued me. Huh. They're they're good people. Are, mostly are when they're not. Anyway, that doesn't matter. Um, what can I get for you? What do you need? I, I'm, I'm very hungry. The, 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 the people on the ship hadn't been feeding me very much. Uh, and then Lobu's going to look up at everybody else and be like, I only carry the fish, and now those are all gone. Can somebody get me a ration or something for this I guy? A, I have a bunch. I give him two days' worth of rations to Lobu to give him. Tell, tell him not to eat it too quickly. Right. Yeah. Uh, Lobu's going to actually kind of pass him small bits of it at a time. Um. And yeah, then takes it give him some eating. water, too. Oh, thank you. Any Anything for a fellow fellow man from under the sea. <laughs> uh, what, what tribe are you from? Uh, I'm from the, the Minan. Live nearby? Uh, about... Uh, oh, my bearings are correct. I'm about we're, they're about twenty miles away, south southwest of here. Well, maybe we can uh, get you back to that. Oh, that would be. That'd uh, be for wonderful. the meantime, for the meantime, just rest up. We've uh, we've just captured this vessel, and we don't really know exactly. Well, uh, I don't know how to operate it, and I don't know my friends well enough to know if they know how. I do. Well, I don't understand what you're saying. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to turn to Topaz and Volt, and it's like, all right, well, we just looked through here. Uh, by the way, the, we uh, start uh, one, one of the heading things back. on the bosun's description is the bosun's definitely a guy uh, and has a hook for a hand. For a, a left hand, and you notice that the, that the that the sea elf is giving them looks, like you know, very keep me away from this person looks. Do we? Is that a? Did you do this? Did you hurt him? At the same time, before the dude even has a chance to answer, Lobu is going to be like, "Did he hurt you?" Uh, the the. Uh... The sea elf, who, who says that my name is Oceanus, uh, looks back over his shoulder towards the bosun and just kind of shivers and then looks back at Lebu and says, real bully of a, a man. I, I haven't been hurt too much. Just kept in in, in chains and uh, uh, oh, they, they didn't feed me very well. They, they could bring me disgusting things. Uh, it could just be what they eat, for all I know. But oh, it's nothing like, you know, home food. Yeah, I wish I had some more fish left for you, buddy. Oceanus well, kind of glances over towards Kelly. Oh, there seems to be fresh crab here. <laughs> uh, oh, Oceanus, we're saving that. <laughs> for late. 
Okay. I'm going to turn to Topaz and Bill and say, um, I think we should start steering the ship back to port. We can check out the rest of the ship during the night on the voyage there, but I think we should start heading there. At least get the move on. Right. I'm going to head up to the, uh, the place, you know, up top where the captain is. Okay. Uh, he's still knocked out, yeah? Yep, he's still unconscious. I'm going to call up to Volan. Hey, can you put him with the rest of the people in the swamp room? Uh, and I'm going to take control with my marine background. Excellent. You can always put him in the holding cell. You could. I'll move up to the prow and navigate. I think we should put the bosun in there. Bad idea. So I like that idea a lot. The area that, uh, that Topaz is now at. One more description here for you guys. The forecastle. A massive shape in the center of the deck must be the ship's capstan. From it, the anchor chain runs down the chain vent to port of the... Blah. From it, the anchor chain runs down the chain vent to port of the prow. So, and it's clearly down at the moment. The anchor is in place. Alright, we need to bring that up. Start cranking it up. King, 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 king. And Capesk will navigate. It's not too hard to navigate in this area, given all the, uh... Given the coastline that you're at, it's not like you're out in the middle of the ocean or anything. And besides, your marine background would have helped you with that, given the, the, the position of the moons, the stars, all that sort of right. stuff. I'm gonna... Hey, guys, start turning on the lights so they know we're coming. Okie doke. Yeah, you can just throw the lights around the, the, the top of the boat, right? With all sorts of see. unlit hooded lanterns, too. Yeah, like exactly. The... That's what I'm saying. Start lighting them up so they can see us coming. If they don't, uh, a unlit boat is never a good thing. <laughs> yes, um, I just want to go ahead and, and ritual cast tech magic just so I can do like a once over of the whole boat. All right. And see if there's anything worth. Nox is going to hold up a sign asking just anybody really. Are there any more chests? Underneath the uh, the cabins, yeah, there's like ten of them, according to. Ten of them, ten of them, ten of them, as it, it was... echoes in Noxie's mind. That's right, it was the key that was in the, the captain's quarters. <laughs> okay, Noxie will go down there and try to find these ten chests. I'm just imagining our list, like, you know how the cartoons, like, the smell, like, they rise up and <laughs> yeah. like, just yeah, float the, towards the smell. The, 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 unfortunately for Noxie, during this, on this voyage home, when she, uh, looks through all the chests in the, in the hole, in the, uh, in the hold, they all just contain clothing. Oh. That face. However, as she finishes it, she remembers she saw a box under the captain's, in the captain's room she had yet to open. Oh, yeah. All right, let me open that. All right. Uh, uh, what's your passive investigation? Or actually, roll your investigation check first. Oh, no. All right. And so you're doing your typical um, thieves tools? Yes. All right. All right, so as, as you seek your thieves' souls in and hear the click, you hear another click. Roll a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> oh, geez. oh, no. I good thing it's dexterity. That's your thing. Oh, oh that's And nice. you take the full brunt of, of a scythe, of a scythe as it comes slashing up at what? you. What? Seven points of damage. That's half my health. Ouch. However, when you open it up, with all, even through all your pain and the blood just dripping down, you find that the chest contains ten electrum ingots. 
Holy crap. What, what, what? <laughs> also, yeah. They, 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 they list the price at 100 EP each, but you can also list it as 50 gold each. Because an Electrum is, is 5 silver, also known as half a gold. So, 10, that's 500 gold worth of, of ingot bars here. Nice. Is that the first time I've taken damage? I think I've taken damage before, but... Oh, that's the first time you've <laughs> taken damage. Oh. Yeah. So, so, at this point, you are all now level 3. Woohoo! Oh, yeah. sweet. So I just got all my hit points back? Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna use the character mancer to level up this time. Yeah. All right. Let's see if I get a good. Hey, that's a great roll. We have to kind of pick whether we're gonna do a roll or a half, right? Roll or average, yeah. Uh, I mean, it'll automatically show you what your average is, and you can decide to roll instead. Is basically how it works. When it comes to yeah. character mancer, anyway. So you can like risk it on on a roll, or you can take the average. Of... You can just keep 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 the average. Oh, so that's two more health for me. Yeah, well, you're the rogue. You 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 can run away from things very easily, and you hide. <laughs> and you're very sneaky. I added been, ten health, yo. If it hadn't been for the sudden fog cloud and and the uh, and the lizard man, you know, smelling you out, the you would probably would have stayed completely hidden in that barrel. So, you bring your... <coughs> you bring your, um, your ship back into port now. And with it all lit up, like, you know, people, you know, the, the night watch there is kind of like, you know, expecting this. But they're rather surprised by the, uh, the look of the ship itself. Mm. Who will speak for your, for your party? Um, I, I don't know. I like Lobu nudges Fallen. He's like, yeah. You should talk to them. I don't want to talk to them. Put the pirate hat on her. Oh, yeah, as soon as we, we're, we're docking, right, right now? Yeah. As soon as we get there, I'd motion for Topaz to lower the anchor so we don't crash okay. into things. All right. Fallen. Sag, did you get down the silver that I picked up? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't uh, marked down anyone's gold yet because I don't want to double count. Okay, go ahead and put uh, seven hundred silver pieces into the party funds. Ooh. Nice. Lobu looks over at Fallen and he's like, "Look, these other guys—they're kind of violent, and..." They like to start fights. And me, I get distracted halfway through. I feel like it's you or it's Dovin. And I think you'd make a good leader. I really don't think so, but I do appreciate uh, the comment, Lobu. Um, what were we talking about? Okay. <laughs> That's a fair point. Uh, um, you guys want me to go ahead? Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going to take the pirate hat and just the captain's hat and just put on your yeah. oh, fantastic. I'm gonna walk down and to the main deck as soon as we're anchored down I'm the captain now <laughs> I've been waiting for somebody to say that all game <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you guidance just in case you need to make a skill check okay all right so inspiration too so you guys roll back into town. Uh, it's getting it'd be a pretty big clamor at this point. Some of the guards are coming out, and like you know, they they see the group of you. Just like you know, you've got your prisoners. Um, the captain, the original captain, has now been like you know waking up and just like thrashing about some. But you guys have him tied pretty well. Uh, Volan, what would you like to say to the captain of the guards as he 
strolls up. We bring you the captain of the Sea Ghost on orders of one of the council people, and um, that's we. Great. I don't even know what the fuck I'm gonna say. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, we bring time. you the. Uh, we bring you the captain of the Sea Ghost. That's the captain of the Sea Ghost. It's like you hear murmurs and everything like that. And um. Lander, uh, Lander just kind of like looks you over. He hasn't been like too fond of you guys because of some of the stuff you've, you know, pulled <clears> earlier. <throat> but you know, he's looking at this now and is like, you know, giving you guys more respect and is like nodding. He's like, wow. Um, roll a perception check, please, Volan. Does she get the D four from guidance? Sure. Nice. Uh, Volan, as you're speaking to this guy, you notice that he keeps glancing over towards Kopesk. Yeah. <laughs> I know we had um, some issues in the past, but we've tried to make that up to you all. Um, so we've brought you the captain. Yes, I see that. He, he takes his eyes off of uh, off of uh, Kopesk at that point and looks towards the captain and, like, nods a bit. Do I notice he's looking at me? Roll a perception check. <laughs> yes, you you do see him glancing your way and just watching you a little bit Is he too looking? long. But he's looking at the captain like... now, but... Okay. It's like he's looking at me like more than most people look at me like, oh, that's weird. It's a lizard man. Well, you know, lizard men are, co co you know, somewhat common enough. Right, but and... it, yeah, not human, you know. The look that children give when they see something unfamiliar. It's more of you get used to people looking at you because of your, your weird appearance on top of being lizard man. But no, this in this case, yeah. it looks like he's studying you specifically for various um, features. And he seems to be just giving you the hard eye, but now he's like glanced back over at the captain. It's like very good. This this appears to be uh, be Captain Cigar <clears throat> Cigar Snake Eyes himself. Well, I'm sure he'll be hanging soon enough. And like the the man just kind of like you know growls and yells and like you know just starts yelling profanities of various kinds. Snake Eyes. <laughs> you did, Lobo. We we beat your greatest. You did it. You did it, Lobo. <laughs> Lobo's like ducked behind the party in general and just kind of like narrowing his eyes at this guy that's being called Snake Eyes, and he's like, "It always takes." So long. <laughs> and it's just like. Imagining the the eyes just leaping out of the head. <laughs> That's just gonna slide closer to Dovin and away from the guard. Yeah, the guard is currently, you know, got some other guards and is currently dragging the the captain out away. Yeah. Are we supposed to? Did I know? Did do I know that? Volan noticed he was looking at me. Uh, probably not, because you were busy looking at the guard at, at the guard captain. I hmm. learned a little bit. Were we supposed to get paid for this, or do we just get the ship? I don't know. I don't we're getting paid for this. Man. The councilwoman said we're getting paid. Yeah, she also said you get to keep whatever's on the ship and nice. the ship itself if you manage to capture it. But you will oh. require a registration fee to register your ship under a new name. Did I happen to see anything magical when I did my, my once over the oh, ship? Uh, no, nothing more than you'd already come across. Um, I mean, cool. you already found, uh, like, you know, the, the, the stuff. Yeah, the left. scroll and the, and the book. Yeah. Okay, just checking. The 
guards are gone now, right? Uh, there's more guards down below. They're they're waiting to see what you guys say, but a group of them have gone off with the captain. Okay. Oh, what do I'm we do with the rest of these people? Somebody remind me what the councilwoman's name was. Uh, shoot. I don't Ida. have my notes up. Her, her name is Ida o Owland. Hmm. Owland. Should we go meet her? What do you think? On um, the ship, you also still have uh, the uh, the four um, people that were d down below, plus the bosun. In addition to the captain, the, the captain's already gone, but you still have those other five people. Oh, they didn't take them. No, they only took they only took away the captain because it's the only one you presented to them. Oh, okay. Well, they'll take those guys up and give them to the guards that are still on the thing waiting for us. Yeah. Uh, Noxy. Roll a perception check. All right. Yeah, as you, you're getting close to, like, you know, help towards the edge where the, the prisoners are being taken away, you notice that the guards are all seemingly paying attention towards Kapesk. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to tap Volin and Dovin and, like, just to uh, this room over here, just away from everything else, while they're all getting the people. Sure, no problem. What's up? <sighs> they were looking at me, weren't they? I saw the captain of the guard staring at you for a little bit, and I guess I thought it was because... We did insult him quite a bit, but I mean, it doesn't feel like that anymore, does it? No. Is there a reason they'd stare at you? Remember when I was asking you about if you knew uh, an Aritofa? Yes, actually, yeah. Yeah, um... He is my, uh, brother. Uh, yeah. He wanted power, and, you know, lizard folk aren't the most sentimental people. So, to gain his position, he killed the person in that position and um, framed me for it. Oh. Well, that's, that's... big. Yeah. Uh... uh... Are you and wanted? If the guards are, if the guard, yes, very, very wanted. More so closer to the capital, but I guess words finally got around here. I can't put you guys in danger like that. Well, mm -hmm. you didn't do it. I didn't, but I'm. Still, are they going to listen to a messed up uh, lizard folk? Especially when there's another more powerful one telling people that I did it. But you didn't do anything wrong. And are, are we sure that that's why they're staring at you? I... They're definitely looking at me. Don't know why they're staring at him, but if he thinks that's the reason... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason. To... I'll get Just my to... revenge. If you guys ever hear about Arya Tofa getting knocked off know that I'll be there, but I can't stay here and keep you guys in danger. Well, quite convenient that we've just come across the ship, isn't it? There's that, and we're in a position where I think we can negotiate for your freedom. Certainly. We've captured how many people from a pirate <laughs> No, it... This is big in this city, but... <laughs> probably be nothing to the big people up in the high chair. I doubt they'll I'm gonna about some silly runaway brother. I'm gonna give you a wink at the silly one of your I'm gonna take out the golden rose that I kept and uh, pass it to Volan. Just stay alive for me, okay? Okay. And I'm gonna pat Dovin and say Keep them safe. I trust you. Esk walks out of the room, 
and jumps overboard. Lobo's like, bye. You hear a loud splash as the lizard man um, executes a, 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 you know, dive into the water and just sinks down, not to be seen as the guards like you know, stop and look for a moment. But apparently they were given orders not to pursue if uh, he goes down into the water. They were just waiting to see if he came off the ship. Technically, he never did. So, uh, so when's, confused. when's Capaz coming back? Um, that's a question. I don't think he is. But he'll, he'll find his way. Be safe. <clears throat> Lobo Seems looks ridiculous kind of to me. Up from that. After what we just did for this town, the council. It is a little heartbreaking, isn't it? He's getting banished? Uh, I think he left more on his own accord. He wanted to keep us safe, he said. There are some circumstances that I think are misunderstood by most. And I think the guards might not have treated him very well. Uh, Lobu, who's who's never like shown a huge amount of love for Kapaska, except for in the last battle, there, um, <laughs> kind of just like starts wiping at his eyes a little bit, and then he's like, "I I gotta I gotta take a nap real quick, guys," and uh, he heads for the nearest unoccupied room. I'm going to find... So there are barrels under deck, right? Yes, there's a lot of barrels filled with things under uh, under deck. Mostly more of that brandy and rum. Alright, I'm going to grab one of them and kind of dump it overboard. Yes. Well, they're about your size. So... Wait, hold on. Do you need help? Yeah, I'll ask Volan for help. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you and Volan together can, can maneuver one of the barrels from down below and just dump, get it overboard. And then I'm going to sit in the barrel. Ah, you dumped the contents overboard, got it. Yes, I'm not dumping the whole thing. Yeah, you're still getting a little bit wet from the, uh... You know, from the from what had been in, in there, because it's like, even though you dump it out, it's like, you know, was adhering to the insides and it's now being soaked up by your clothing. <laughs> Sorry. You left with the Philosopher's Stone. That's funny. Yeah. We didn't know it was cursed. <laughs> I was going... Yeah, I was going to give it to you guys, but then I forgot that I can't give it. Oh, yeah, you literally can't. Because it's a cursed <laughs> luck stone. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, oh, Sorry. Before we're done for the day, uh, did we find any weapons on these guys? Uh, there are various weapons down in the hold, but we'll get to that um, next session that we are here. Uh, oh. Speaking of which, um, we can either do a very short session next week, starting at 8, uh, possibly only being for about an hour just to do wrap-up, or we can just cut meet again in two weeks. Uh, my current... Um, my current things going on at work is inc basically we have been very understaffed at the moment. Uh, let me finish the broadcast.